Shall I please ask the West Indian Symphonic Choir to give us one music as the high table then get ready to cover it? So let's please be seated. Let's all please be seated, smiling next to the person sitting next to you. So is the practice of pharmacy. And that is why the pharmacy council is endeavoring to level up with this technological advancement by introducing the e-pharmacy platform. Thus, the theme for this year's ceremony, digital health intervention in pharmaceutical care delivery, the role of the pharmacist. So you can give a round of applause. This year, we have a total number of 620 inductees.
Okay, okay. So by virtue of me being the MC, allow me to be biased because that's my alumni. That's my school. You know, you know, so we have brothers from the St. Paul University. And we have brothers from the University of Health and Allied Sciences. And we also have brothers from a few, a few graduates from the diaspora. I love the You the feel their vibe? You the feel their vibe? Okay, all right. And so, with that, I welcome you all once again. My name is Philip Mentor. I'm going to be one of your humble co-MC, and I'm assisted by... Yeah, yeah, boy, I'm in touch. So I'll just proceed to introduce our guests on the high table. But before I do that, I'll farm Solomon Mutako to do the opening prayer for us. Please let's welcome Solomon. on all issues at hand. We commit all inductees into your presence, Father. We pray that today marks the beginning of success, the beginning of excellence in their pharmaceutical careers. We thank you for your love, your favor, your mercy, and we pray that you continuously bless us in Jesus' name, and all shall say, Amen. Please, a round of applause for Solomon once again. For the program to begin, I'd like to briefly introduce our guests on the high table. To my immediate left is the Registrar of the Pharmacy Council, Pam Dr. Audi Rao. He will be introduced properly at the appropriate time. And then we have our Deputy Honorable Minister of Health representing the Minister of Health. And he is in the person of Honorable Alhaji Mahama Asay Saini. At the appropriate time, you get to know who he is in detail. Then our chairperson for the occasion, we have Mrs. Doris Fusuong Hema Adai Fuakwa. Next to her is our guest of honor, in the person of Man Madame Kimberly Rosen. And then our chief pharmacist, Mrs. Joycelyn N. Aziz. And then our one and only president of the society, president of the Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana, Pam Dr. Samuel Paul Donko. Thank you very much, Madam Cynthia. So now the pleasure is mine to introduce to you the chairperson for today's occasion. Our chairperson for the occasion is Mrs. Doris Fosuhima Adai Afuakwa, a registered pharmacist with over 35 years of practice. She graduated from the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology in 1979 and was entered into the Register of Pharmacists in Ghana in 1980 by the Pharmacy Board, now Pharmacy Council. She worked at Ridge Hospital in Accra for a while and left Ghana for Francophone La Côte d'Ivoire and Cameroon, where she worked mainly in the private sector. She returned to Ghana in 1992 and worked at Life Pharma Limited, now New Pharma Limited, a wholesale pharmaceutical company. In the latter part of 1993, she established Dayden Pharmacy, a retail pharmaceutical company located near La General Hospital, Accra. She is an active member of the Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana, PSGH, and has served on many committees of the society. Some of the positions held included treasurer of the Greater Accra branch of PSGH, national treasurer of PSGH, vice chairman of Ghana Cooperative Pharmaceuticals Limited, 
member of the building committee of PSGH that spearheaded the movement of officers of PSGH from the Social Advance Center near Teachers Hall to its present location as Bachona. She is a founding member of Lady Pharmacists Association of Ghana, LAPAG, an interest group of PSGH and served as public relations officer in the group. She is the current chairperson of the governing board of the Pharmacy Council and was appointed such by His Excellency
Tamedro, the chairperson of the registration committee of the Pharmacy Council. We have Mr. Joseph Kwajonsia Nuagwe. Pharmacy. It's not that clear. Ladies and gentlemen, this will go. Yes, in that ceremony, we have some of our sponsors, and these sponsors have been with us throughout the years, sponsoring all our programs, and we are so grateful to them. So we have Oswald Chemist who are the first time sponsors for this award. Open Kermit, are your reps here? Please give us a and let's acknowledge you. Please let's put our hands together for Oton Kermit. We have J.M. Addo and Sons Pharmacy. Also, they've been sponsoring our programs for the past five years. J.M. Addo, you are most welcome and we are grateful to you. And then we have Tobinko Pharmaceuticals Limited. Tobinko, thank you very much for your wonderful work. And we'll invite them to give us one rendition. Whilst we get ready to be welcomed, especially to the ceremony. One rendition, Wesleyan Symphonic Choir.
Sandra for them. That was so inspiring. Thank you very much, Wesley and Symphonic. But now another multinational pharmaceutical company in the same capacity as medical rep from the year 2000 to 2005. He moved into community pharmacy practice. of the Governing Board of Pharmacy Council, members of the Governing Board of Pharmacy Council, President, President of the Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana, Rector, my sister, of Ghana College, is here, I'm sure, and I knew he would be coming. Guest of honor, Deans, Faculty members of schools of pharmacy present here. Past chair persons of the governing board, as you see my good friend, Junior, smiling here. Past registrar, good friend is here, know you look at me. Our hardworking preceptors, invited guests, our distinguished inductees parents and guardians, friends from the media, ladies and gentlemen, a very good morning to you all. On behalf of the Governing Board and Management of Pharmacy Council, it is my pleasure to welcome you all to this year's induction ceremony of our newly qualified farmers. Let me begin by thanking our distinguished guests of honor, 
the minister who is represented here by his deputy to this program. We are equally grateful to our special guest of honor, Ms. Kimberly Rowan, Director of the USAID, Ghana Mission, for accepting our invitation to bring the occasion and to share your thoughts with us as a thematic people. To my wonderful inductees, show you are around with your parents. You are welcome. I will offer my heartfelt congratulations to you for making your small, your teachers, and your parents proud. Your congratulations is a recognition of your entire efforts and accomplishing the rigorous program of our city. It also tells me. The more that you are now equipped with the knowledge, skills, and expertise necessary to deliver high quality, patient centered, and consistent care. Madam Chair, I'm pleased to report that this morning we are inducted. In July and in April last year, we were the product of two sets of examinations that led to the United States. And the breakdown. Sure, this one will work. Okay. Good. We take off. Where we left. The breakdown of the inductees pair, the universities attended are as follows Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, KNUST. 298, University of Ghana, Lagos, 668, Central University College, 202, University of Health and Allied Sciences, 
13. Others live in those in diaspora, 20 something. And today, as well, candidates who excel. Ukraine Award will be awarded accordingly. It is gratifying to note that in both examinations, more than 90% of the students passed. This represents a significant improvement. This represents a significant improvement in the pass rate by 10 percentage points from the 2021 pass rate. Congratulations to your brilliant performance. I would also like us to appreciate our lecturers, receptors, preceptors, and all our trainers for their hard work. And sacrifice that continue to ensure that we turn out high quality pharmacists. As we celebrate the achievement of our newly qualified pharmacists, let us all also recognize the hard work and dedication of their families, friends, and mentors who have supported them throughout their journey. I'm confident that our new pharmacists will continue to uphold the highest standards of professionalism, ethics, and patient care, and make valuable contributions to our healthcare system as a way of saying thank you. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the COVID-19 pandemic has highlighted the importance of digital health technologies and has accelerated the adoption in pharmaceutical care delivery, the role of the pharmacist. What then? Whilst not taking the wind out of the sail of the thematic speaker, I wish to underscore that by integrating digital technologies in reduce healthcare costs, and enhance patient outcome. As medical technology change at pharmacists to be up to date with the latest advances in digital health technologies and to collaborate with other healthcare professionals
And I would like to entreat those who are compiling the protocol list for me, please write clearly, especially with the titles, so that we get it right. As I'm about to make this correction, my mind is drawn to a day when a gentleman walked into the pharmacy with a handwritten note on a piece of paper. And so he stood there and read the note, please, I want to buy calcium sandas. And I believe we all know what he wanted. It's calcium with vitamin C made by Sandoz. And the wife had written Sandoz. So he came to mention calcium Sandoz. So please, when you're writing, write so clearly for me so that I don't make a mistake upstage here. By this, I want us all to acknowledge Chief Superintendent of Police, Reverend Dr. Thomas Opoku Dakwa, who is in charge of the police hospital chemist. Chief Soup, please give us a wave. Thank you very much. And sorry for the initial flaw there. Now please let's also recognize Dr. Justice Yangsen, who is the Vice President of the Ghana Medical Association. Dr. Yangsen, you're most welcome. Superintendent Ajekum, Director of Dispensary. I don't know. Yes. Welcome to. Now let me acknowledge all the staff of Pharmacy Council. We have all our regional managers, heads of departments, and all staff of Pharmacy Council. They are the people in blue. Please give us a wave. Thank you for your hard work and for keeping council and making council what it is. DSP Kwame Owusu. Chief Technician, Police Hospital, please, if you are here, give us a wave. ASP, Bathine Rudolph, Clinical, oh my goodness. ASP, Dr. Cipran Edu Enim, he's also here from the Police Hospital. And um, ASP, Mariam Ewua, please give us a wave, you're most welcome. We have ASP, Dr. Ellen Sam, who is also here with us. Dr. Sam, please give us a wave. Thank you. We have Dr. Ama Nkansa and the famous Auntie Ama, as we all know her. We have, thank you for that loud round of applause for Dr. Ama Nkansa. Dr. Christiana, Christina Osei Asari from Central University. She's the acting dean. Professor Baba S. Mohammed, UDS, the dean of the school. And we have Dr. Robert Inkum from Cape Coast Teaching Hospital with us. Thank you very much. We'll continue to do this as and when the program rolls. Now, I'd like to invite a special person into our midst to give us a speech. And he is the president of the Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana. His farm, Samuel Paul Donko, and he is a Chief Executive Officer and Chairman of Cedar Point Chemists Limited, a wholesale and retail pharmaceutical company located in Accra, Abilinkbe. Farm Sam Donko holds a Bachelor of Pharmacy degree from KNUST, Kumasi, and an Executive Master's in um, Business Administration, MBA, from the University of Ghana Business School. He also pursued a Doctor of Pharmacy degree at the University of Ghana, and also attended leadership and management programs at the University of We Water Sand, Johannesburg, South Africa. I hope this is not a calcium sanders case. He was the country and the regional manager at Roche Pharma, a Swiss pharmaceutical company from 2001 to 11 covering English West Africa and Southern Africa with a wealth of experience in pharmaceutical marketing. He was also a member of the management team of Roche Sub-Saharan Africa, Direct Markets, and served as an African representative on the Roche Footprint Project with IMS International. He was the president of Pharmaceutical Importers and Wholesalers Association, PIWA, from 2016 to 2020. President of the Pharmacy Business Executives Association of Ghana, 
and Business, and a standing executive committee member of the Pharmaceutical Society from 2011 to 2017, and also a member of the National Executive Committee of Ghana National Chamber of Pharmacy from 2015 to 2020. Pam Donko is the immediate past president of Winneba Secondary School All Student Association, WASA, and an active member of St. Augustine's past student, APSU. APSU. He is a member of the governing board of the Pharmacy Council of Ghana and also a board member of the Ghana College of Pharmacists. He is a board member of the Gomwa Jaman Senior High School in the Central Region. He has served as Director of Membership and Service Projects for Rotary Club of Accra Ring Road Central, 2017 to 2019. He is a sports enthusiast with special interest in soccer and tennis. Ladies and gentlemen, help me to welcome the President of the Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana in the person of Dr. Samuel Kau Donko. Thank you. Thank you, Cynthia, for all those nice words, nice and very lengthy words about me. Madam Chairperson, Pharmacist Mrs. Doris Fusuhima Adaya Fuakwa, Chairperson of the Pharmacy Council, our guest of honor, Alaji Mahama Asisi, Deputy Minister of Health, representing our able Minister of Health. And our guest speaker, Ms. Kimberly Rosen, the Director of USID Ghana Mission. All lecturers and deans of the various pharmacy schools the governing board members of the Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana, standing executive committee members of the Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana, governing board members of the Pharmacy Council, governing board members of the Ghana College of Pharmacists, and all fellows and members of the Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana who are here with us today. All other protocols observed. Indeed, I would want to say that from Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana, welcome everyone to this very special occasion. I will set the ball rolling by congratulating, congratulating and welcoming all of you, especially our newly qualified registered pharmacists, into this noble and honorable profession called pharmacy. I am very excited to call you colleagues of this honorable profession as we discharge our professional obligations to the utmost satisfaction of our patients and clients. As the president of the Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana, I will be interacting with you on many other occasions apart from today. And indeed, these interactions will begin from today, where we'll have an orientation program for you right after the induction. So please, all of you here, endeavor to stay on for the orientation program right after the induction and we can guarantee that we'll give you very good refreshment after that as well. Ladies and gentlemen, by virtue of the section nine of the Pharmacy and Drug Act 1961, the Act 64, every person registered as pharmacist in Ghana automatically becomes a member of the Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana and is designated as MPSGH by the Professional Bodies Registration Act 1973. PHH is the registered recognized professional body for pharmacists and to practice pharmacists in Ghana you have to be a member of the Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana. Ladies and gentlemen, today that you are being inducted into this noble profession, let this honorable designation MPSGH show on your business cards. The Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana remains the only legally and professionally recognized association of all pharmacists in Ghana. Being a member of this society is generally seen as an, as an indicator of integrity, ethics, trust, and expertise. The PSGH has been at the forefront of advocacies and have brought the profession this far. 
the profession you are entering into wouldn't have been what it is today had it not been for the Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana. And at this time, I would want all of you to recognize that all our past leaders who helped bring this profession for you to happily join, we need to always recognize and give them the needed commendation. It will be your turn soon to also be part of the Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana leadership. And always remember, our primary focus at Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana is advocacy to take the profession to the best of height. We would want to improve our profession. We would want it to remain one of the best professional, one of the best professions in the world. And it is not just in Ghana. Worldwide, everywhere you go, you should be proud to belong to the profession of pharmacy. And today, I must admit, you should be proud of yourself that you are being admitted into this noble and honorable profession, pharmacy. But my piece of advice to you would be one, this profession is not a patient-centered practice. You have been inducted into the profession at a time when the practice is shifting, if it has not shifted, from product-centered to a more patient-centered one. When we were in school, we were told that a pharmacist is supposed to be custodian of medicines. So we pride ourselves being the owners of medicines. But in today's world, we no longer call ourselves custodians of medicines. Why? Because now we see ourselves as being more patient cared and therefore we would want to see that we are the expert in pharmaceutical knowledge. We are the expert in provision of pharmaceutical services. Pharmaceutical care is therefore our obligation. And ultimately we want to deliver the best of it to our patients. Whichever area you choose to practice, always remember that the ultimate beneficiary of your professional duties is to the patient. And for that reason, you need to be a lifelong learner. As pharmacists, you have a duty to maintain and improve upon your competence, knowledge, and abilities, especially as new medications, devices, and technologies become available, and as health information advances. In an ever-changing world, you will be required to continuously embrace new behaviors and adjust your practices towards emerging rules in patient care. Self-learning and continuous professional development should be part of your lifestyle. You are not done with education. You are now going to learn more. The motivation to engage in CPD should not be merely to earn credit points, but as seen as a lifestyle of enhancing your competences. Colleagues, I want to remind you that the world is becoming more and more competitive, yet full of opportunities. It is therefore very imperative that you add value to yourself in readiness of opportunities that may come your way. Beyond the six traditional practice areas of pharmacy, which are the community pharmacy, industrial pharmacy, hospital pharmacy, regulation, academia and research, and finally marketing, the other areas worth considering as you come out. And these areas are now emerging or have are with us. One of them, some of them are in the area of vaccinology. Pharmacy should show interest in vaccinology. Pharmacogenomics, health informatics, health insurance, sports medicines, health and pharmaceutical system strengthening, quality management systems, medicine regulatory affairs, veterinary pharmacy, herbal medicines, protest management, health law, and many others. Consider specialization and postgraduate training at the Ghana College of Pharmacists and other universities across the world. Know your interest and passion and pursue them passionately and ensure that you excel in your chosen areas of profession. At this time of your career, you should identify where you would want to practice and where you think you have the passion and where you believe you would excel. If you believe it is for you to be, ex to be excellent in the field of medical representation, go for it. If you believe you'll be a very good hospital pharmacist or clinical pharmacist, please go for it. Start preparing yourself. Enroll in the Ghana College of Pharmacists, all in an attempt to excel in your chosen area of practice. If your interest is also in drug formulation, follow it. Don't give up. You can become an industrial pharmacist and be able to do the needed formulations. If it's a herbal pharma, if it's herbal medicine, you can become a herbal pharmacist by applying your pharmacognosis diligently. Artificial intelligence is also here with us, and its application to health and pharmacy practice is going to evolve. And how ready are you for it? If you are not yet ready, then colleagues, please get yourself in preparedness for it because it is here with us, 
and it will be applied to the profession. These digital health technologies, which in pharmaceutical care delivery, which is the theme of today's induction ceremony, will require all of you to continuously improve yourself, continuously learn in order to enhance your skills and competences. On the professional outlook bit, let me touch on it. How you dress to work is very important for us as pharmacists. Appropriate attire is important because it creates an image that is consistent with the public expectation of a healthcare professional. I want to admonish all of you to dress professionally to work in a formal business attire. For those in the clinical and community setting, a touch of clean and pressed PSG branded pharmacy white goods and a name tag is necessary for identification. And pharmaceutical sector of Ghana will ensure that all of you can get out today with one of these pharmacy and your registration number is fully embossed on it for identification. <laughs> Adhering to a professionally inspired dress code is an important element of professionalism and can influence not only how we behave, but also how we are perceived by our clients and families and other members of the healthcare team. Finally, I would also want to admonish you that you should need to be good citizens, not just spectators. As pharmacists, it's required of you to be good citizens and uphold and defend the laws of the nation. Keep yourself informed of laws that govern your practice and medicine in general, including other relevant laws pertaining to sanitation, tax, health, and safety. It is important for you to note that for you to renew your license and to practice as pharmacists, you need to get a task grant certificate at the end of every year by Ghana Revenue Authority. This is a law. And at this stage, as you start earning revenue, as you start making some good income from your local services, try and keep the keep notice of all of them because you need to file your tax returns at the end of the year in order for you to be able to renew your license. This is a law. It's not coming from pharmacy council. It's not coming from pharmaceutical society of Ghana. Be good citizens and comply with the laws of the land. Let me caution that the Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana and the Pharmacy Council frowns on pharmacists who hang your licenses in facilities and work in absentia, especially without making any arrangement for other pharmacists to cover your absence, what we call local pharmacists. It is therefore vital that wherever Class A and B medicines are dispensed, a pharmacist is available to oversee operations. You need to support and compete with the enforcement authorities. You should not engage in any activity that will bring the profession into disrepute. And you should expose without fear or favor, illegal or unethical conduct.
Abutiati. The, the past chairman or CEO of the Chamber of Pharmacy. You're welcome. Dr. Robert Inko, the Director of Pharmacy. Dr. Joycelyn Aziz, the Chief Pharmacist of the Ministry of Health. Reverend Dr. Dennis Sena Awi. Thank you very much, Dr. Chris. So with this, I humbly ask farm doctor, Mrs. Ellen Sam, to please be upstanding as I read a brief citation. Citation for ACP farm doctor, Ellen Adubia Sam. 
Preceptor of the Year Award. Focused hard work is the real key to success. Keep your eyes on the goal and just keep taking the next step towards completing it. If you aren't sure which way to do something, do it both ways and see which works better. John Carmack. ACP Dr. Mrs. Ellen Adubia-Sam is a clinical pharmacist extraordinaire who has spent 23 years of her career training and grooming pharmacy interns. She is smart, devoted, resilient, passionate, confident, disciplined, and ambitious. She believes in excellence and encourages others to gain mastery in their field of endeavor. A proud product of Wesley Girls High School. I'll take it again for you. A proud product of Wesley Girls High School. She holds a B farm. MSc Clinical Pharmacy and from D from the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, where she has been an adjunct lecturer for about 10 years. She also holds a postgraduate diploma with distinction in clinical pharmacy from the Robert Gordon University of Aberdeen, Scotland, and is a fellow of the Ghana College of Pharmacy. She has served and continues to serve on several boards and committees. A few are listed below. She was the board chair of Africa Malaria and Media Research Network from 2015 to 2020. A board member of the Ghana Police Hospital. A board member of the Ghana Police Hospital Board, 2017 till date. A member of the TAP. Um, OMC, I think I'm having a sandals issue here. A member of the Technical Advisory Committee on Safety of Medicines, FDA, 2016 to present. Member of the Education Committee, Ghana Police Hospital, 2008 to present. Member of the Quality Assurance Committee, Ghana Police Hospital, 2012 to present. Treasurer of the Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana, 2008 to 2012. Member of the Public Health Committee, of the Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana, 2006 to 2008. She has also facilitated numerous seminars and training programs. She is known for her strong communication skills and ability to break down the most complex scenarios to the layperson's understanding. She has also facilitated. She is currently the director of pharmaceutical services at the Ghana Police Hospital, where she has practiced for close to three decades. She has trained and mentored. Okay, I think we can clap. She is currently the director of pharmaceutical services at the Ghana Police Hospital, where she has practiced for close to three decades. She has trained and mentored hundreds of interns for 23 years. Her commitment to the training made the police hospital one of the best centers for training pharmacy interns in Ghana. All the pharmacy interns who have passed through her hands can attest to this. The following are some of her favorite quotes to pharmacy interns over the years. You check, cross-check, and recheck. <laughs> Two things, either you learn or I sack you from the internship program. <laughs> Submission time is 8 a.m. on the dot, and I mean on the dot. Discipline is the name of the game. When I come in, the door closes. No excuses for late submission. The more you do, the better you become. Please, let's give a round of applause. For So on that note, I humbly invite the chairperson to be supported by the Registrar of Pharmacy Council and the CEO of Tobinko Pharmaceuticals Limited, or his representative, to help with the presentation of the award.
Can we please do it one more time for them? Thank you, thank you, thank you. The Honorable Minister, the members of the high table, and all protocols observed. I really like to show my profound gratitude to the Pharmacy Council for this great honor done me. I don't take it for granted at all. <laughs> Pharmacy Council, thank you, thank you, thank you. It's been a long journey. 23 years. The journey has not been easy. This morning, I am really filled with gratitude. I like to thank God. My testimony is just simple. See how far God has helped us. Ebenezer, our help is from God. I like to mention a few people who helped me get this far. I like to mention my all time mentor, ACP retired Mrs. Georgette Hazel. Madam, if I have come this far, it's because I stood on your shoulders. You taught me everything I know about patient care. Thank you very much. I also like to mention Professor Mahama. He was my supervisor as far back as 2002, when I was doing my MSc in clinical pharmacy. I like to mention Prof. Boabeng for believing in me, encouraging me, and giving me opportunity. Prof, this award is for you as well. I like to mention Professor Alex Dotu and Dr. Raymond Tete for the mentoring and the tutoring through the years. I'm very, very, very grateful. I also like to thank my family. My husband, thank you for your patience and tolerance. At a point, our home was police hospital annex. You never complained. Thank you for giving me the wings to fly. I like to mention my siblings, especially my younger sister Gloria, my greatest cheerleader. Gloria, thank you so much for the affirmation. Thank you for the support. My sister from another mother, Margaret, thank you for the prayer support. And then my team at police hospital. About 90% of you were my former students. Now we are colleagues. I couldn't have come this far without your support. Thank you very much. And finally, to all the students who have passed through police hospital from the year 2000, for every work I personally supervised before the presentation was made, this award is for you, wherever you are across the globe. Thank you for pushing me to strive for excellence. God bless us all, God bless our noble profession, and God bless our beloved country, Ghana. Thank you. Thank you so much, thank you so much. If she hasn't taken her seat yet, I believe we've been doing better. Thank you so much, thank you so much. And we are grateful to God for giving you to us. So with that, we invite the Wesleyan Symphonic Choir to give us a brief interlude.
Thank you very much, Wesleyan Symphonic Choir, for that beautiful interview. So please, we continue to acknowledge these persons. Mr. Kwesi Poku Wateng, Director of USB. <laughs> Mr. George Abu Wateng, Business Development Manager for MNG. Dr. Alfred Adu. Dr. Alfred Adu is on the pharmacy board of the Confu Anoche Teaching Hospital. <laughs> Dr. Jawad Saleh is the head of pharmacy in New York. <laughs> Madam Victoria Bediafo. P&T Pharmacy. <laughs> Dr. Mark Dredozi, Director of Pharmacy for the International Maritime Hospital. <laughs> Dr. Berima Afrani, the Dean of Faculty of Pharmacy for Entrance University. Dr. C. Asamoah Boateng, Senior Assistant Registrar of the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. <laughs> Professor T. C. Flesher, the Dean of the School of Pharmacy for UHAS. <laughs> Mr. Mante Steven, the CEO of the Empire of Zoe. And Mr. Joseph Tiasi, specialist pharmacist of the Greater Accra Regional Hospital. <laughs> at this juncture, at this juncture, I would like to give a brief citation of the special guest of honor, Madame Kimberly Rosen. A brief citation on Madam Kimberly Rosen, the mission director of USAID Ghana. She currently serves as USAID's mission director for the bilateral program to Ghana. Previously, she served as the deputy assistant administrator in the Development, Democracy, and Innovation Bureau, DDI, and oversaw one of its largest and most diverse portfolios, the local, faith, and transformative partnership hub and innovation Technology and Research Hub. Prior to the DDI Bureau, she served as Deputy Assistant Administrator and Policy, Trade and Regulatory Reform, and Local Sustainability. In her last overseas role, she served as the Mission Director for USAD, Kyrgyz Republic and led a portfolio that included economic growth, democracy and governance, health and education reform. Other assignments include the Director of West African Affairs Office in USAID's African Bureau, Deputy Mission Director in Liberia, and Director of the Economic Growth Office in USAID Afghanistan. Throughout her 22-year career, she served in a number of headquarters and overseas assignments. She is a member of the Senior Foreign Service and has received multiple performance awards from both USAID and state development. Before joining USAID, Ms. Rosen worked in corporate finance with the Mobile Oil Corporation and served as a business development volunteer in the Russian Federation with the Peace Corps. She has degrees in Commerce and Engineering Sciences and Finance MBA from Drexel University and International and Public Affairs from Columbia University. With a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, shall we welcome Ms. Kimberly Rosen to give her address. Thank you. The Honorable Mahama Asai Zene, the Deputy Minister of Health, Mrs. Dolores Adai Afu Afwai, Mrs. Uh, sorry for these pronunciations. Mrs. Uh, uh, Jocelyn Aziz, the uh, technical coordinator at the Ministry of Health, 
Dr. Adu Rayouf, the Register of Pharmacy Council, Dr. Samuel Ko Do Dan Ko, the President of the Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana, members of the served. Good morning, everyone. It really is a true honor for me to be here to represent the U.S. government at today's 2023 induction of new pharmacists. I actually specifically represent the United States Agency for International Development, or USAID. We are the largest bilateral donor partner here in Ghana, I'm very proud to say. And in 2022, this past year, our bilateral assistance was about $140 million uh, last year. And we worked in important areas such as health, basic education, governance, and agriculture and economic growth. But um, decades of engagement here in the public health sector, we believe, has saved thousands of lives while building a more resilient structure and system. And that health infrastructure includes the strengthening of training and the professional development for health professionals like yourself as new pharmacists. And so today, we're gathered today, uh, by a common goal, which is to ensure the safety, the quality, and the efficacy of pharmaceutical products to improve health, health outcomes for all Ghanaians. USAID and private providers. The pharmaceutical industry is the backbone of a strong healthcare system. Since 2009, USAID has worked closely with the Food and Drugs Authority, or the FDA, to strengthen its quality assurance and quality control systems and to guarantee the safety and quality of medicines, foods, and other biological products. We continue to support the FDA to conduct post-marketing surveillance to identify and take regulatory action to rid the, the, the market of substandard and falsified medicines. And as you know, incorrect dosages, incorrect frequency of administration, the use of multiple drugs to treat diseases, and drug treatment mismatch contribute to about two-thirds of all prescription errors. Almost half of medication errors occur among 20 to 59-year-olds who have acute illnesses. So, and as you all know, this is a serious problem since these situations can have life-threatening consequences. So to ensure the safe um, prescription and dispensing of medication to your patients is really a core function of a pharmacist. And as pharmacists, it is your responsibility now to ensure the patients not only get the correct medicine and dosing, but they also have the right information and guidance needed to use the medication safely and effectively. And I can use my own experience engaging with a, one of your fellow pharmacists at a local a pharmacy here, that when I asked for a malaria test, an in-home malaria test, uh, the, the, even though there was a line behind me, the pharmacist took a moment and asked me, do I know how to use this? And of course I said no. So you really walk through step by step what I needed to do, which I really appreciated and felt much more confident in using that test. So please take that moment if you work with patients on a day-to-day -day basis to understand who your clients are and what they might need, because it really might have a truly um, an impact that goes well beyond what you might think it is just with that one additional minute or two with that client. Over the years, USAID has deepened its partnership with the Ministry of Health and its agencies to ensure that safe, effective, quality medicines reach all Ghanaians, no matter where they live or how much they can pay. We also believe that patient safety, it really is a fundamental right and must be made a priority in all healthcare setting, <clears throat> settings. As healthcare providers with expertise and focus on medications, you have a unique opportunity to expand your role as patient safety leaders and work with patients and other providers to prevent medication errors. This will improve uh, patient outcomes. So as you enter the workforce, please keep in mind that you will often be the key link between the patient and the healthcare system. You may be the first point of contact with somebody who is not feeling well, and as such, as such it is your responsibility to provide sound medical advice and provide their referrals where they're required. So you carry a lot of weight and responsibilities 
but your work ultimately will save lives, and not every profession can, can speak to that. So the journey ahead of you can be daunting, but it's also so exciting and full of opportunities to do good in this world. So let me end by expressing my um, heartfelt congratulations and admiration, true admiration, to all those who are entering this very noble profession. So today, take a moment to celebrate yourselves, to celebrate how far you've come and the path, the very exciting path ahead of you. My deep um, uh, uh, congratulations to you all and thank you, good luck for you all, to you all, thank you. Do it once again for Madame Kimberly Rosen. In our English class in the um, in the secondary school, now um, senior high school, but in our time it was secondary school. We had an assignment to summarize a whole chapter. So I want to throw that back to you. If we can summarize. In three sentences, Madame Kimberly Rosen's speech. That would be a very good assignment for us. But one thing that I picked from all that she said is that we have a responsibility to save lives. And she also expressed her heartfelt congratulations to all the inductees. Please give me a wave, inductees. Yes. In Akan, there is an adage, literally, it means that when the eldest person in the family or in the home takes his shower, that will be the end of all water that has been stored in the containers. So at this time, I know for such gatherings, it's, it's just speeches and speeches and speeches. And as we come to the crowning of all the speeches, we have our Minister for Health, ably represented by his deputy, to give us the keynote address. If you would give me a minute, sir. Um, I think the audience would like to know just a little bit about who the deputy minister is. And I promise I'm going to keep it very brief. He is the Honorable Alaji Mahama Asei Saini, and he is an accomplished Ghanaian politician and member of parliament for Daboya Mankarigu constituency. He has a background in economics and law and was the chief revenue officer of the Ghana Revenue Authority. If you've not paid your taxes, watch out here. He is a member of the Agri Committee of Parliament and he supervises some agencies under the Ministry of Health. He currently serves on the Medical and Dental Council Board as well as the Narcotic Control Commission. Honorable Alhaji Mahama Seiseini is from Daboya in the Savannah region and is married with four children. He was appointed in January by His Excellency President Nana Adodankwa Ekufuadu to serve as the Deputy Minister of Health. Ladies and gentlemen, with a round of applause, let us welcome Honorable Alaji Mahama Seiseini, Deputy Minister of Health, to give his address. Honorable, you. you're welcome. Uh, I think we need to clap hands for our dissertation. It's a very important question. Well, those of you who went to Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, I went to Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, not Kwame Nkrumah, I went to UST, <laughs> University of Science. <laughs> so, but we are together. And I was happy that at least the majority of the pharmacies that are coming out today, they're from that school. And I want to know those who are in Quanti, those who are in uh, Unity Hall, and the Katanga people, don't worry. <laughs> There's no fight here. Yeah, we, yeah, we are going to take care of patients and clients. <laughs> uh, that's by the way. Madam Chairperson, 
members of the governing board of the Pharmacy Council, the special guests of Ghana, the Register Pharmacy Council, Register and CEOs of sister regulatory uh, bodies, the Director of Pharmaceutical Services, Minister of Health, the Directors of the Ministry of Health, those who are present here, the President of the Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana, the Chairman, President, and Rector of the Ghana College of Pharmacists, the representatives of sister colleges, officers of the Pharmacy Council, and their teas and their families, the media, ladies and gentlemen. It is a special honor and a privilege to be part of today's induction ceremony of newly qualified and registered pharmacists to be delivered and to deliver the keynote address on this memorial occasion. It also gives me great joy to welcome another group of newly qualified pharmacists into the health sector to beef up the limited numbers of health professionals and provide them quality pharmaceutical services in Ghana. Having gone through long and audacious period of training over many years, you have the right to view this occasion as one of the high points in your professional career. On behalf of the ministry, I take this opportunity to invite all gathered here to join me to congratulate all our newly qualified pharmacists as well as the parents and guardians for this achievement. <laughs> Madam Chairperson, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, the team for today's gathering, Digital Health Interventions in Pharmaceutical Care Delivery, the role of the pharmacist, is one that I deem more appreciated most appropriate, uh, appropriate in this new world order where digitalization is seeking to improve every aspect of our lives. The accelerated development in digital space requires all stakeholders to be interested and to join this new innovation more than not to be left behind. The pharmacy profession, ladies and gentlemen, cannot therefore sit idle, but must reflect on the critical role they perform in the welfare team and ensure that their roles are in fine tune with contemporary technological advancement. The vision of, of government is to ensure that all government business processes are digitalized to ensure that Ghanaian public are able to assess government business without any hindrance. This is evident in the government digitalization agenda, which has been driven by the Vice President, His Excellency, Dr. Mahmoud Bawiyan. Madam Chairman, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, the launch of the e pharmacy policy by the Vice President a few years ago set the tune for the pharmaceutical industry to take up the mantle and move pharmaceutical care delivery to a new level. This is a level where the role and expertise of pharmacists could be widely could be widely and really and easily accessible to all persons in the country leveraging technology. This means that all persons should have access to quality and affordable from care when and where they need them 
and need them with maximum or minimum hindrance or hardship. And to Madam Chairperson, it is important for pharmacists, pharmacists to, to explore innovative, innovative means of meeting the needs of patients and clients who require their professional services. They could, be, they, could be, they could imply the use, this could imply the use of innovative ways of meeting patient and client needs using technology. All players within the pharmaceutical subsector will have to deploy state of the art digital technology to aid in, in type of services they provide to the public. A, pharma a pharmacist must lead the digital technology derived in the administrative and various institutions, be it government, partial government, or private. The digital, the digital world has taught, has taught and brought their services close to the people in all aspects of life. And pharmaceutical services can also use such tools to provide services and knowledge and knowledge med in medicines in the digital world. Let us not forget that technology has permeated several sectors and several aspects of our, our everyday lives, including transportation, financial transactions, learning and education, security, among others. As professionals, the, the, role, uh, the roles are the first play as pharmacists will require us to have an in-depth knowledge in the digital space to be able to function well and better serve the pharmaceutical needs of our patients and clients. Technology is transcending research and as we incorporate technology in our works, as pharmacists, we may be able to generate the needed data which will fit into the national statistics on health to make the, the impact that pharmacists make in the communities. Madam Chairperson, industry is now developing new active pharmaceutical molecules using technology using technology. Pharmacists who aspire to be in the manufacturing industry should be abreast with digital and technological advancements in this space. I encourage the inclusion of far all professional pharmacy practice groups and are quest to impact efficiency and financial service delivery and urge you all to contribute your quota to the development of the pharmacy profession and the nation Ghana as a whole to enable us to achieve our goals of universal health coverage. As the government seeks to promote digitalization in all aspects of its business, it is my hope that the relevant regulations and policies will be put in place by all departments and agencies, including regulations, so as to ensure a smooth transition into the digital space. When all stakeholders play their role effectively and efficiently, we will all achieve the aim of ensuring that our clients have access to quality to quality pharmaceutical care and improve health outcomes. Madam Chairperson, ladies and gentlemen, I hereby 
entreat all stakeholders to collaborate effectively to ensure that the provision the pharmaceutical industry leverages technology and their various rules, be it academia, research, manufacturing, hospital, or hospital or private community practice to ensure that the role they play remains relevant to the people they serve. I would like to conclude by encouraging the inductees to show keen interest in technological advancement happening globally and locally within the, within the financial industry and be informed adequately to us so as to not, not be left out. I wish the best. I wish you the best in your chosen career and never cease to embrace technology in all that you do. I just want to say thank you and may God bless you. And we say a big amen to that. Thank you very much, Honorable. Thank you so much. Now we've come to the climax of today's ceremony, and that is um, the swearing of the oath. Ladies and gentlemen, I want us all to acknowledge and appreciate that all inductees will swear this oath both orally as the chairman administers it, and you would also sign the form that has been given to you. So you are swearing the oath in two forms, orally and in written form. And that is why I would urge you to take it very seriously, because this is where you swear the oath. Now, I would want you to note that the oath is on page 24 of the brochure. So after we've done everything, all in that tease, make sure you sign your portion and then you hand it over at the registration desk. Before I invite the chairman to administer the oath, I want us to listen to the essence of this oath. And the oath is called the apothecary's oath. The apothecary's oath is a solemn promise. Please, in that tease, be all ears and listen to the essence of the oath because this is the climax of today's ceremony. The apothecary's oath is a solemn promise usually invoking a divine witness. In this case, God, regarding your future acts or behavior as a pharmacist. The first act implying the fairness and good behavior in a profession and life was an ethical ground that was later reinforced by swearing an oath when taking the position as a pharmacist or apothecary. It is focused on religious and personal values and based on traditional professional principles of pharmacy practice, such as dignity, confidentiality, faithfulness, and integrity. It is a pact between you as a pharmacist and the general public or patient with God as a witness and must serve as a reminder to you in your practicing lives that you pledged before God to put service to mankind first. This is the essence of the oath you are about to swear. I would at this time invite the chairperson to administer the oath. All in that ease, please be upstanding and put your right hand on your left breast as you take or swear the oath. Thank you, man.
your hand should be on your breast. And when I say I, you mention your name and then repeat after me. I pledge to devote my working life to the service of mankind through the profession of pharmacy. will consider the welfare of humanity and relief of human suffering my, pri my primary concerns. I will use my knowledge and skills to the best of my ability for the benefit of the public and other health professionals. I will endeavor to keep abreast with developments and maintain professional competence. I will obey the laws governing the practice of pharmacy and will support enforcement of such laws. I will maintain the highest standards of moral and ethical conduct as will uphold the dignity of the profession of pharmacy. In all these, I pledge voluntarily with the full realization of the confidence and responsibility with which I am entrusted by the public so help me god congratulations so now i can add my voice to all the voices that have congratulated you this morning, all in that is congratulations once again. I would want to acknowledge Dr. Yvonne Ayongo Edubuahen, who is the head of Clinical Trials Department, Food and Drugs Authority, and a member of the Governing Board of Pharmacy Council. And then, finally, on the list of acknowledgments that I have here, I acknowledge Brigadier General Augustine Esiedu, who is the Director General Training for the Headquarters, Burma Camp. Brigadier, I salute, sir. Now, this time, we would want to acknowledge the inductees, as we mentioned, their names, Row by row, so Yeah. So, uh, if you hear your name, please be upstanding. Abebio, Frederick, Nana. Abebio, Trobel, Presler. Abanga, Moses, Nyaba. Abankro, Amafrema. Abdul Razak, Muniba, Ngemia. Abiti, Samuel, Aram. Abuache, Stephanie, Ejakobia, Abra, Timothy, Abu, Mary, Ayoba, Mi, Abu Bakari, Aishetu, Inusa, Achampon, George, Frempong, Achampon, Gerald, Enim, Achampon, Samuel, Ado, Achampon, Vanessa, Esiedua, Achi, Precious, Aka, Kujo, Thomas, Esiedu, Aqua Charles Atso, Adams Obed, Adanuvo, Samuel Kofi Mawena, Adasi Elom Kofi, Ado Daniel, and Ado Eric Osei Akwesi. Please put your hands together for these young pharmacists. Thank you very much. Please 
resume your seats. Ado Isabella Efua Kafui. Ado William Ansa. Ado William Che. Adi Enoch Ferdinand. Ajayi Kalma Ekwiasi Edura. Ajay Kinsley Kwesi. Ajay Michael. Ajay Boateng Sandra No. Ajay Pongo Foriku Eku. Adote Niyakwe. Edu Ama Enida Sokwa Abia. Edu Jennifer Ejare. Edu Michael. Edu Buafu Hillary. Edu Sey Abraham Kramwa. Ajoto Estelle Selop. And Aferi Bridran Gladys. Please let's put our hands together for them. So we continue with the names. Afo Irabna Yeboa. Afo Theophilus. Afo Buahin Emmanuel Tichi. Afo Ama Asima. Afo Rebecca Sewa. Afikroa Isaac Aseidu. Afo Akwa Eliza Nao. Afram Tracy Dakwa. Afrani Randy, Efrifa Thomas Akwesi, Efriye Emanuela Menta, Agla, Agamlo Nancy, Agbehia Jimaima, Agbematu Daniela Elo, Agbenohebi Selo Kojo Kuma, Agbenyo Francisca Ewenam, Aguado Kevin Seiram Kufi and Agrifin Mildred Mami Abba. Please let's put our hands together for them. Kindly begin your seats. Ago Mercy Yongo, a Japan Eugen, a Jekun Samuel, a Jiman Emmanuel Ayite, a Jiman Lydia Prempe. Ajiman Nana Ifia Sewa, Ajiman Felix Martin, Ajiman Georgina Ubusu, Ajiman Marcus Wache, Ahiaba Sarah Mawena, Ahunto Comfort Ami, Akai Abuna Benua, Aki John Weiss Delali. Akumia Richard, Akoto Emmanuel Dako, Akoto Joshua Opong, Akon Ismond Yao, Akufu Adu Abigail, <laughs> I was just waiting for that reaction. Akunye William Akumbas, Alatiga Martina, Akuka, Alhassan Hiat, Alhassan Samira Mina, Ali, Ali and Nia Muhammad Sabiku, and Aloni Aguaba Esther. Please let's put our hands together for them. So we continue with the acknowledgments of the inductees. I'm a ble bless Kobe. I'm a glow Augustine. I'm a qua Eunice Nanama. I'm a qua Abigail Osei. I'm a qua Apesi. I'm a qua Patrick. I'm a Joe Dela Afi. Emisa Michael. I'm a Bing Dina. I'm a Geralda Baba. I'm a Lynette Amwenima. I'm a Te Darrell Nenenu. I'm Wate Leslie, I'm Ofa Gideon, I'm Ofa Jane Sousu, I'm Dick Ofori, I'm Pedu Yabua Efuachira, I'm Pofo Gilbert, I'm Pofo Mark, I'm Poma Bernice, and I'm Ponsa Benjamin Anoche. Please let's put our hands together for them. Thank you. Please take your seats. I'm Ponsa Derek, 
Ameni Ampo, Ameni Ampo, Amponsa Elvis, Elvis Kwejo, Amponsa Gerald, Amponsa Kelvin Asa, Amponsa Petra Chirewa, Amuzu Edith Seyram, Anaba Helena Abani, Anagli George, Anaman Sandora Felicia, Anani Luke, Anani Abebrese Melissa Asantua, Andor Christopher, Andor Rose Enchiwa, Eni or Ani George Edria Moyao, Eni Mbwateng Christiana, Eni Mwa Oba Abna, Enini Prince Nyako, Ankara Esther Efiachrewa, Ankara Papayao Odam, Enku Eiram Aku, Anan Williams Abigail, and Anan Carlos. Please put your hands together for them. Please with you, Mr. Snell. Ano Kaku Blay, Ano Jeffrey, Ano Barbara, and Sir Caleb Anthony, and Sir Joseph Odoi, and Sir Seth Ubusu, and Song Audrey in Kansa, Auntie, Auntie Odro Mercy, Auntie Lawrence Ayim, Auntie Mamiya. Asamaniwa, Enchi Mensa Ifia, Enchi Bright, Enchi Derek, Enchi Mami Adwa Fusuhima, Enchi Michael, Enchi Timothy Efa, Enchi Wusiako Frederick, Enchi Mensa Esther Dafa, Anwa Sadat, Adi Nani, Anyam Anyamesim Dina, Apana Adajina. Rina, Malibna, Apao, Lydia Ufori, Afo, Hilda, Apao, Adwa, Krantima, Apia, Adwa, Asantua, and Apia, Alexander. Let's just put our hands together for them. Can you have your seats as we proceed? Apia, Desmond Yao, Apia, Florence Kisiwa, Apia Gordon, Apia Linda, Apia Safua Ukia, Apia Nu Ukia Asantiwa, Apriku Elvis Jan, Ahen Robert, Aku Fozia Ibrahim, Ama Jedidaya Bwachiwa, Arthur James Leslie, Arthur Joseph Varikaps, Ayi Nathaniel Ni Amasa, Asamoa Benjamin Asante, Asamoa Bessie Efe, Asamoa Daniel Boedi, Asamoa Isaac, Asamoa Filipina Sewa, Asamoa Ya Asantiwa, and Asamoa Watin Jane. Please let's put our hands together. Please take your seats. Asamoa Prempen Anakwaame, Asangba Bismarck Deladem, Asante Med Madeleine. Asari Akuya Santua, Asari Angela Kunedu, Asari Barbara, Asari Hansen, Asari Jennifer Nana, Asari Victoria Jabia, Asari Amane Efia Udruwa, Ashrifi Monica Naache, Ashon Theophilus Tete, Asiaje Susanna Maupomo, Esiedu Clara Emily, Esiedu Henrietta Yamwa, Esiedu Isaac, Esiedu Joseph J, Esiedu Miguela Danefwa Bunewa, Esiedu Akofi Jasmine, Esiedu Jeche Isaac Kofi, and Asibe Collins Tete. Please, let's acknowledge them. Please take your seats. Esikabin Cassandra, Asma David Kofi, Asuma Kinsley Emmanuel, Asumedu Emanuela, Atawuchugi Paul, Ateko Bobson, Atogem Basia Aaron, Ata Edwin Ofori, Ata Efa Godfred Kweku, Atipo Belinda Etonam, Atipo Gladstone K, Ato Jane Laku, Atule Stephen, Avo Doreen Dorinda, Awito Philip Bedi, Ewa Elisha, or Elisha 
kwabena ewu adjustment na kosu asi edua ayi don ko stephanie ayim an ofuriwa ayim philippa asi edu ayambire bartholomew azika emmanuel azode irene chioma baku cyril sedem kofi baku david makafui kwesi and baba fuseini You can please have your seats. Baba Abdul Rahman, Bedu Geoffrey, Bedu Preko Abigail, Baden Desmond Kwame, Baden Roland Pamina, Bedu Mariam, Bamfu Ya Prepa, Berima Samuel Jimmy, Bart Addison Charles, Bas Basal Jonathan Kufi, Bediako Nana Ajua E. Bediako Samuela Ifia, Bempa Ifriye Kari Kari, Benedicta Apia, Benjamin Apao Amankwa, Berko Doreen Louisa, Ber Nana Eje, Bernard Afuakwa, Binam Andy, Baini Samuel Eko, and Biniam Prince Dada. Please let's put our hands together for them. Can you take your seats? Biwiara Du Mauritia, Blanson Enoch Kofi, Bliti Dovi, Ayababi, Bwachi Yado Pearl Besi Ifwa, Bwedi Vera, Bwedu Derek Jesse, Bwafo Ifia Oswa, Bwafo Irene Ifriye, Bwahin Irua Adwa N.A.T., Bwachi Ansan Elijah, Bwachi Michael Osei, Bwachi Yado Emmanuel, Boama Kofi Foku, Boama Lois Boatima, Boampo Benjamin Educhu, Boating Ajenim Gifty, Boating Dina, Boating Edna Nana Ya Srebo, and Boating Hannah Abrifi. Thank you very much. Resume your seats. Please bear with us. Because of the great numbers, we'll have to do this, so we acknowledge all our inductees. Boateng Hana Abrefi, Boateng Henry Nyako, Boateng Jimaima Chechiwa, Boateng Kwabnose, Boateng Ochrekwesi, Boni Godswell, Bonsu Kofiose, Bonsu Yao Safo, Bonzo Jokebet, Bosu Grace Boache, Botre Alexander Kusi, Bozi. Aman, Amanda Fidem, Braima, Barnabas, Zida, Braketu, Michelle, Bra Bracon, Joe, Jacob, Brefo, Yao, Boamponsem, Brobe, Emmanuel, and Bo Brobe, Emanuela, Brown, Barini, Akwe, Brown, Matlock, Boatsure, Florence, Ma, Dewi, Chawe, Daniel, Akon, Chita Alaye, Lois, Patricia, Koba Wilhelmina, Kujo, Kelvin, Niade, Krenzel, Hilary, Erefua, and Diadriam, Diodone, Kwame. Please, let's acknowledge them. Thank you. Please take your seats. Dazi Nathaniel, Dankwa Yawefum, Denchido Kasoredu, Dankwa Edward Bediakon, Dankwa Samuel Apia, Dakun Benedicta, Dakun Kwejo Hene, Dakun Laura Laku, Dakun Samuel, Dakwa Daina Yabua, Dateba Nanaya, Davis Emmanuel, Davis Emmanuel Augustus, Deborah Mamiadwa Ifa, Dei Francisca Eiram, Dechi Kwame, De Souza Susanna Etonama Jo, Jonobua Tracy Tete, Duameko Kaleb, Dodu Jocelyn Wellinam, Donko Dorothy, and Donko Rachel Abna Anowa. Please let's acknowledge them and please resume your seats. We proceed. Duya Paul Afrani, Dukli Melvina Ama, Dumalo Peter Mawudimo, Jamina Bismarck, Jamina Daniel. Kwame, 
Jo Andrews Abena, Jo Naftali Kwesi, Jumfuo Samo at Samo Edu, Jikono Kingsley Elo, GC Esther Seywam, Adrian Andrews Kingsley, Egan William Ofuwe Atta, Ehan Presler, Ekuma Doreen Abayaba, Eric Adri Mauli Yao, Ezwa Irene, Eshen Derek Kweku, Esuman Georgina Etriba, Aisen Andy Kobena, Fiajo Bright Mauli, Fianco Daniela Nyako, Fiano Evans, Fiato, Ma Fiato Magellina Etowo, and Fawcett David. Please let's put our hands together for now. Please have your seats. For St. Gabriel Eja, For St. Joseph Mentor, For St. Mentor Gabriel, Frimpon Ovi Asiedu Ejei, Frimpon Maureen, Frimpon Dorcas, Bekle Delali Afi, Jase Bright Yeboa, Jemfi Philip, Jemfi Yeboa Aduma, Jan Patrick, Jan Fosu Julius, Jesse Samuel Kujo Jr., Jedu Kwezi Ejapon, Jeche Milna Abana Nyakwa, Jima Yeboa Bafo, Haji Juliet Emefa, Hagan Emanuela of Haribia, Hagan Michael, Hanif Ibrahim, Delam Widi, Hansen Yamwa Ebo, Hawana Abdul Jalil, Henahu Imado Ampoma, Hodo Perfect Nicole Maufemo, Hilton Hutton Mills Ni Udati, and Idrisu Umar. Please let's put our hands together for that. Please take your seats. Inkum Loretta Issa Mashida Sadiq Isifu Sharif Sumani Joahine Kwesi Johnson Jemima Dobia Justice Nuduanyi Lolonyo Kakrada Edinam Kwame Kata Collins Selassie Clu Benedicta Ajele Kwampa Dakwapenyi Koka Franklin Kwame Combat Rashida Yempab Kunedu Lawrence Kwejo, Kunedu Mavis, Kunamua Elizabeth Obinewa, Kranting Jurgen, Agenda, Kodowu Phyllis Delight, Babite Aaron, Bako Robert, Koji Onesimus Kwesi, Kodo Maxwell, Kodo Zida Titus, Krampa Mavis, and Kuma Maxmilan. Ko Kolbe Angbo. Please, let's put our hands together for them and resume your seats. Kumashi Steffi Abla, Kusi Kelvin Minta, Kusi Mamia Kriya Fanso, Kusi Apia Mary Lee, Kusi Boateng Kwabna, Kwache Adefe Nana Kwabna, Kwache Elizabeth, Kwache Eric Ofei, Kwache Jacqueline Krama, Kwame Every facet, Kwao, Esther, Dede, Noki, Kofi, Kofi, Uncle, Kofi, Mensa.
Bobby, Dr. Emanuela Bobby. And this citation is in honor for Dr. Emanuela Brobe. I have come to believe that each of us has a personal calling that is as unique as a fingerprint, and that the best way to succeed is to discover what you love and then find a way to offer it to others in the form of service, working hard, and also allowing the energy of the universe to lead you, unquote, Oprah Winfrey. Colin Powell, a former United States Secretary of State, was right when he said, quote, a dream does not become reality through magic. It takes sweat, determination, and hard work, unquote. With a result-oriented mindset and passion for entrepreneurial excellence, you assiduously underwent training and confidently emerged victorious. It is not surprising that your devotedness to maximum customer satisfaction led to client gratification in many of the institutions where you rendered your services, including Confo and Notchy Teaching Hospital, Kumasi. So, Treso Government Hospital, Kumasi, AC Pharmaceutical Industry Limited, Archdiocesan Health Pharmacy Limited, Gaspar Pharmacy, and OK Anesthesia Pharmacy. You did not just attain the doctor, the doctor of pharmacy, of pharmacy degree, degree from Kwame University, University of Science and Technology, and Technology but you but also you gathered in-depth in knowledge, knowledge in pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical care, care, care in an amazing, an amazing understanding, understanding of, of confidential laws, laws and, standards. and standards. Your performance, Your performance in, the in the pharmacy practice, practice section, section of the December, December 2022 Ghana Pharmacy, pharmacy Professional, professional Qualifying Examination, examination was, outstanding, was outstanding, for which, for which you have been deemed worthy of receiving the Pharmacy Practice Award. Be encouraged. To be, to be hungry for success, for success. Hungry, hungry to make, to your, make mind. your mark, hungry, hungry to be seen, seen. and to be and heard, to be heard and, and to have, and an, have effect. an effect. And as you move up and become successful, make sure also to be hungry for helping others, unquote, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Ladies and gentlemen, with a round of applause, let us welcome Dr. Emanuela Brobe upstage to receive this award. And thus, I invite the chairperson, supported by the president of the PSGH, and the sponsor, that is the CEO of Ozone's Chemist, or his representative, to present this award to Dr. Emanuela Brobe. And the chairperson as well, please. Another round of applause will do. Isn't that beautiful? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Now let's do a better one as they take their seats. Auntie C. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. That is wonderful, congratulations. Now the ultimate award. The award is the John Okran Award. I'd like to take us through a brief history of this award. The late Dr. John Okran was a senior lecturer of pharmaceutics in the Faculty of Pharmacy 
Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, KNUST. you find this on page 30 of the brochure. He was a pharmacist with a strong sense of commitment and stood for nothing but the highest ethical standards and practices within the profession. As strict disciplinarian as he was, Dr. Okran inculcated that virtue in all his students, associates, friends, and colleagues. He actively participated and involved himself in the affairs of the Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana, PSGH, where he held the position of Honorary General Secretary and later Vice President. Dr. O, as he was affectionately called by his students, became the first Executive Secretary of the West Africa Pharmaceutical Federation, WAPF, now West Africa Postgraduate College of Pharmacists, with his duty post in Lagos. During one of his tours in Ghana, Dr. Okran was involved in a tragic accident on the Accra Kumasi Road and later died in hospital. May his gentle soul rest in peace. To honor him for his vision, commitment, contributions, and dedication to the course of pharmacy, the West Africa Postgraduate College of Pharmacists instituted this award scheme, the John Okran Award, in recognition of his immense contribution to the development of the profession to be awarded to the candidate who excelled in the professional qualifying examination conducted by the Pharmacy Council. This is a brief history of the John Okran Award. This year, and for this ceremony, it looks like it's an all-ladies show. The ladies are sweeping all the awards. And so to receive this ultimate John Okran Award, and uh, before I read a citation, I'd want to invite Dr. Samira Mina Al Hassan. Just rise to your feet where you are and listen carefully to your citation. So this award would be given by the Dep Honorable Deputy Minister of Health, the Chairperson, the Registrar. Yes. So please hold yourself in readiness to give this award to the well-deserved Samira, Dr. Samira Mina Al Hassan. <laughs> Ultimately, leadership is not about glorious crowning acts. It is about keeping your team focused on a goal and motivated to do their best to achieve it. Especially when the stakes are high and the consequences really matter. It is about laying the groundwork for others. Success and then standing back and letting them shine. Quoting Chris Hatfield. Your thirst for knowledge is unsurmountable. The skills and experience you have gathered over these few years indicates your studiousness and desire to be a beacon of hope to all. You held a bull by the horns and took up various roles in your field of educational expertise. You selflessly worked in Top Up Pharmacy, Tema Community 4, Ho Teaching Hospital, and International Maritime Hospital, Tema. With hard work and a passion for excellence, you were awarded the best project work in the Faculty of Pharmacy for the class of 2022 in the University of Health and Allied Sciences, UHAS in Ho. You have wrestled with challenges and slayed so many adversities that stood in your path, yet you are still standing strong. According to Albert Einstein, life is like riding a bicycle. To keep your balance, you must keep moving. Albert Einstein, in unquote. This proves that, indeed, life is what you make it. You either build a defense wall or bridge to rise above the obstacles. 
Every step of the way, you never looked down on anybody, but rather you treated all with love and respect. Your dedication affirms the words of Ben Carson, and I quote, if you make every attempt to increase our knowledge in order to use it for human good, it will make a difference in us and in our world. We hope you will make a difference in, in your world. Your adaptable and talented attribute, coupled with time consciousness and good interpersonal skills, makes you a sought-after individual. And this puts you in a step above your peers. Continue in excellence and remember to keep your eyes on the stars and your feet on the ground. Theodore Roosevelt, 26th President of the United States. With a thunderous round of applause and with a standing ovation, we will all welcome Dr. Samira Mina al Hassan to receive the John O'Kran Award which will be ably given by our chairperson, the registrar, and our honorable minister of health. The president will now give the John O'Corn Award winner her white coat. I think we can still give another round of applause. It is no easy award to win. Wow, and beside our award winner is her able mother. I think we need to give them a better round of applause. She has birthed a John O'Connor Award winner. Well done, mommy. Well done, mommy. May God richly bless you. Oh, isn't this beautiful? I think she's tearing up a bit. It's all tears of joy. Oh, this is beautiful. I'm actually having goosebumps over here on stage. <laughs> Thank you so much. Please, let's give it up for the high table as they sit. And so, please, I'd like to invite... the overall best candidate, Dr. Samira Mina al Hassan, to give a brief response Please let's give it up for her. She's coming. Please give it up for her. You can take your time and take your steps. Thank you very much, President of the Pharmacy Council, the Honorable Deputy Minister of Health, the Registrar of the Pharmacy Council, the President of the Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana, and Chief Pharmacist, Special Invited Guest, 
fellow inductees, ladies and gentlemen. It is an honor to be recognized as the overall best candidate in the December 2022 professional exam among such smart and exceptional candidates who took the examination. <coughs> as I receive this award, I do so with eternal gratitude to Almighty Allah for all his goodness and mercies. Aside the God factor, winning this award was not solely through my exclusive efforts, but in collaboration with my family, especially my dear mother and her twin sister, my lecturers and study mates from UHAS, my preceptors from Ho Teaching Hospital, and all my various places of internship. To all persons in the aforementioned categories, I'm deeply grateful and I dedicate this award to you all. Madam Chairperson, this induction is truly an anticipated and a joyous passage ride for us as inductees. However, as my colleagues and I prepare to enter into the real world of pharmacy practice, we are confronted by some uncertainties, which include, but not limited to, a delay in starting our housemanship, which is a basic... <laughs> which is a basic requirement for our transitioning from the provisional to the permanent register and limited job opportunities both in the public and the private pharmaceutical sectors. <laughs> I'll therefore humbly like to plead with the relevant authorities to kindly take urgent actions that may relieve us during these moments of anxiety and uncertainty. To sum up, I would once again like to express my appreciation as the recipient of this prestigious Junior Crown Award, and I promise to practice pharmacy, bearing in mind the values and responsibilities associated with this award. Thank you very much. God bless pharmacy and long live pharmacy. Congratulations once again, ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Samira Mina Al Hassan. She's not yet seated. She's not yet seated. This year, we've had an all-female award winners. Next year, I've not said anything. I just said next year. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So at this point, I would love to invite our chairperson all too soon. It seems we are approaching the end of the event. I know you wouldn't want to go home, but we have to go home. I would love to welcome the chairperson, Mrs. Doris Fosuhima Adai Afuakwa, to give her closing remarks. Ladies and gentlemen, please, let's give her a round of applause as she approaches the podium. We are very much aware of the problems con uh, confronting all of you, and uh, we have discussed it at length at the board meeting. In fact, after this meeting, we would like to meet all the inductees for a very short meeting, very, very short meeting. All the board members would want to meet you for a very short meeting on this particular issue. What concerns you concerns all of us. The world is now electronic, and all aspects of life are going electronic. The technology of yesteryears was mechanical, but we are now in a digitalized uh, world. Artificial intelligence is taking over and has entered the space of our profession. Sooner than later, we will experience this in our country. As young pharmacists, you will have to hold yourself in check so that you will not be left out in the dark. 
The Pharmacy Council, as the regulator, has taken up the challenge and over the years has begun digitalizing its processes. You can attest to the fact that your registration for internship when you were leaving school was done online. Renewal of pharmacies licensure is now done mostly online. And renewal of pharmacy business operating license, licenses have been digitalized. Steps have been put in place for applications for new pharmacy business operating licenses to be done online. This will be rolled out soon, and applicants can track the progress of the applications at every stage of the application process. This is going to address the issue of delay in receiving feedback on applications. Practice will have to follow suit, and this will require the collaborative effort of pharmacists and the regulator. Policies are being developed to incorporate digitalization in practice to ensure that practitioners are always intact with the patient and other healthcare team members to ensure better health outcomes for the patient. This will ensure that standards are in place for practitioners to be readily available in the pharmacies they register to supervise. Let's all look up to this to ensure that our expertise will be available to the general public. The great era of industrialization changed the face of production at some point in the history of pharmacy practice. This moved the production pharmaceuticals from the mortar and pestle to heavy industrialized systems. Likewise, likewise modern day technology will have its effect on the practice of pharmacy. And so I will entreat all pharmacists to begin looking at the practice with current technology in mind. Knowledge sharing with colleagues outside the jurisdiction is possible with technology. Let us take advantage of this space and other emerging technologies and align ourselves well to embrace the opportunities that come within the digital environment in the practice of pharmacy. Let us encourage ourselves and update our knowledge on the advances being made with respect to the use of technology in the pharmaceutical sector. We should also remember that pharmaceutical care is now patient-centered, and there's a need to always learn, not only through CPDs, but also learning by ourselves. That this should be part of us. Continuous learning should be part of us. Some areas were highlighted where you can, you can uh, specialize. Veterinary pharmacy was mentioned, sport pharmacy, regulation, industrial pharmacy, herbal pharmacy, and many more. We encourage all of you to encourage to identify your area of interest and through the Ghana College of Pharmacies, realize your dream. We encourage all of you to register with the Ghana College of Pharmacies, where most of these dreams can be realized. When it comes to dressing, please don't forget. Dressing, your professional dressing is very important. You should take note of that. We should also embrace our laws and comply with them and be good citizens. And let's take all aspects of our training seriously. Let us embrace digitalization and keep the profession alive. Long live the pharmacy profession, long live the pharmacy council, long live Ghana. I thank you. Thank you very much, Madam Chairperson. So, um,
We have our last round of acknowledgements before we finally leave this place. And uh, we have uh, Dr. Ate Japong, who is the Director of Pharmaceutical Services, Ghana Health Service. We have um, Pham Irabna Ansan, who is a specialist from Greater Accra Regional Hospital. Dr. Emmanuel Ireland, who is the National Chairman, CPPA. We have uh, Pham Prisla A. Kofi, also the National Secretary, CPPA. We have um, Pham Stephen Kokwe, who was formerly of Kolebu Teaching Hospital and a specialist pharmacist. We have Pham Lucia Adai, who is the Executive Secretary, PMAG. We have Professor Esie Dujeche of University of Ghana, who is the Dean. Please, let's give it up for the Dean. We have Dr. Raymond Tete, who is also the Head of Department, Central Pharmacy Practice, Central University. And then we have finally, Justice Quenning of Osons Chemists. Thank you very much for bearing with us as we come to the end of the program. Please, I have a few announcements for you. All the inductees will remain seated where you are and guests on the high table will take their first group photograph here and join you right there for the photographs. There will be a few refreshments. Make sure you grab a bite at the foyer before you leave. Now, all specially invited guests by the Pharmacy Council, please meet us at the VIP lounge because you are very special, special people to us. All certificates will be issued at the registration desks, so make sure you don't leave this place without your certificate. Don't leave this place without your certificate. All inductees, please take note that the Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana orientation for newly qualified pharmacists will continue right here in this auditorium after this ceremony, and you will be hosted by the president of the society, Dr. Samuel Kordonko. All newly qualified pharmacists are therefore expected to return to this hall. We know you might want to take a few personal photographs with your families, but make sure you return to this hall right after and sit for the orientation. So after the orientation, we are going to distribute to you a lot of PSGH souvenirs. And then finally, there will be the socializing aspect and then the dinner hosted by the president of the society. Ladies and gentlemen, we've come to the end of the program and my co-MC Philip will invite one of us to give the vote of thanks. So, I humbly invite Dr. Bless Kobe Amable, one of the newly inducted pharmacists, to help us with the vote of thanks. Good, after good afternoon to us all. Madam Chair, Mrs. Dr. Doris Kosuhima, the Registrar of Pharmacy Council, Dr. Alhaji Audurauf, Honorable Minister Health, Honorable Mahama Asei Saini, members of the Pharmacy Council Board, distinguished guests, esteemed colleagues, all protocols duly observed. On behalf of all inductees, I stand before you today with immense gratitude and appreciation as we conclude this remarkable induction ceremony for our newly qualified pharmacists. It is an honor to deliver the vote of thanks, expressing our heartfelt gratitude to everyone who has made this event a resounding success. First and foremost, we extend our sincere thanks to our distinguished guests whose presence here has made or added privilege and prestige to this occasion. Your wisdom, guidance, and unwavering support has invalu is invaluable to our profession, and we are deeply honored by your presence. We extend our deepest gratitude to the esteemed speakers whose insightful and inspiring words have added, sorry, 
Inspiring words have enlightened and motivated our newly qualified pharmacists. Your expertise and knowledge have undoubtedly contributed to the professional growth and development. We are grateful for your time, your dedication, willingness, and willingness to share your wisdom with us. We extend a heartfelt appreciation to our organizing committee and event coordinators, whose meticulous planning and coordination and tireless efforts have ensured that every aspect of this induction ceremony runs smoothly. Your dedication, attention to detail, and countless hours of work have truly paid off, and we are grateful for your commitment to excellence. To our mentors and preceptors, we express our utmost gratitude to your guidance, support, and invaluable mentorship through our training and education. Your expertise, experience, and willingness to invest in the next generation of pharmacists are commendable, and we are grateful for the impact you have made in our professional journey so far. We would like to acknowledge our families and loved ones. Your unwavering support, encouragement, and sacrifices have played a significant role in our achievements. We express our gratitude to you for standing by our side and being a pillar of strength throughout our education and training. To the faculty members, instructors, and staff of our esteemed educational institution, especially those from the U.S. We extend our appreciation for your dedication and commitment to nurturing and shaping these budding pharmacists into competent professionals. Your passion for education and unwavering commitment have paved the way for our success, and we are deeply grateful for your guidance. Last but And our unwavering dedication has brought us to this significant milestone in our lives. We have shown great promise and determination, and we are confident that we will make valuable contributions to the field of pharmacy. I encourage us all to embrace the responsibilities that lie ahead, continue to learn, grow, and make positive impact on health and well-being of the communities we serve, despite the struggles. Yes, there will be struggles as we go along. And after these struggles have choked us enough, and we are uncertain. <laughs> and we are certain, may we be granted the patience to not do the things we ought not to do. In conclusion, I would like to extend our sincere thanks to everyone who has contributed in any way to in this induction ceremony, your presence, support, and participation has made this event a truly memorable and special one. We look forward to the remarkable achievements that we newly qualified pharmacists will receive as we embark on this professional journey. Thank you, and may we advance in elevated professions. Thank you very much, Dr. Bless Amable. This is an academia material. Because for a vote of thanks, you have your intro, you have the body, you have the conclusion. Thank you very much, bless. So as we come to the end of the program, we began with a prayer. We'll invite Dr. Frederica Quay to do the closing prayer for us. Dr. Frederica Quay. Okay, she's right there. Okay. Looking stunning as she takes her step to give the spirit filled prayer. That is Dr. Frederica Quay. Shall we bow down our heads in prayer? Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for a successful ceremony. Your presence has been in this place from the start to the end, and we want to say thank you. Lord, we pray that this batch of pharmacists will be able to use this qualification and knowledge to go out and impact lives. Foster within us a continued passion for learning as we journey onwards. Father, as we dedicate this celebration to you, we thank you for leading and guiding us all. 
as we go to our individual homes. May your presence be with us. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Shall we say loud amen to that? So please, the program is over, but not over yet. We'll invite um, our guests on the high table to please line up here for our photographs. Please remain seated whilst they just go down the stairs to the front for the photograph. Photographers, official photographers, please. So our specially invited guests will be taking our turns to take a few group photographs with our guests on the high table as well. So please hold yourselves in readiness for that. Inductees remain seated right after the photograph section. The governing board of the Pharmacy Council would like to meet with you and especially respond to um, the housemanship issue that was raised by uh, John Okran Awardee, award winner. So the choir, you can continue to sing whilst we take the photographs. And that is the Wesleyan Symphonic Choir. Enjoy the music and the poses for the photographs. Please, yes, so please, our invited guests, please join them. Our specially invited guests will we'll have to do that in, in rows. So please join them to take a few photographs. Please, the next batch of our invited guests can also join the high table guests after this short. The next batch of invited guests, please join our guests from the high table and then staff of Pharmacy Council, hold yourselves in readiness. After this one, the staff of Pharmacy Council will join. Please, please let's join them. Dr. Yvonne Ayongo, please join them. Hello, seniors, please. The photographer is taking a few shots. Now, inductees, our guests from the high table are joining you right there. So please hold on, inductees. Our guests from the high table are joining you right there for a few photographs.
interesting. So the do's and don'ts. From the top. Let's take someone in red. So anyone in red is a victim. Anyone in red. Whether red or white. Let's take kindly reach out to our colleagues I expect outside. I to be educated more on being a pharmacist and what is respect expected of me. That's great. Okay, um, so what is expected of you know. as a young pharmacist? That's a very good one. So we take the last one, then Reginald, you can kick off me. Eh? Anyone? Um, if I know you, you are in trouble. I know some people. Jonathan. you expect from this session? I expect that I'll be enlightened to the... Oh my God. <laughs> I expect that I'll be enlightened as in respect to what the profession requires from me and how best I can also impact as a professional. Thank you so much. Okay. Okay, someone wants to speak. Please mention your name and maybe something little about you. There are some people here. Yeah, my name is Dr. Evans Fianu. Yeah, so speaking from the side of the families, I would like to know what's the working plan so far? What's the structure on getting us the clearance? And I would like to know what happens if the clearance delays to, let's say, the end of this year. What becomes our fit in regards to our permanent license? regards to migration onto the permanent license. I'd like to know what PSGH and YPG has been doing so far in the background in regards to the clearance and how certain we are that in due course or in due time we will to get clearance to start work. I, I think we all can agree that this is a profession where you can actually delay. I mean, by virtue of being in the house, you're likely to get a lot of things if you're not practicing. And also, there's also a concern where most of us are still home and we've still not been able We've still not been able to gain access to a locum slot, meaning we are just basically at home and doing nothing. Whilst pharmacists are there with pharmacists working in the facility. So I'd like to know what's going on with all of this. That's my expectation for being here today. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. So I think I'll leave the floor for Reginald. Reginald, I think maybe you can share with them what happened last year, how YPG was able to and PSGH in collaboration with PSGH yeah. to help with the past housemen with yeah. their clearance. So over to you. Yeah. So uh, that was a very good um, question that you asked there. But before I uh, attempt answering that question, I would like us to formally recognize the presence of the vice president of uh, the Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana in the person of Pham uh, Kwabna Asante. Okay. Let's kindly give him a round of applause. You know, one thing I learned when it comes to events such as this, sometimes you may have heard the name, but you have not seen the face before. And usually, you should be able to connect the face to the name. It's very crucial. And this does not only apply to pharmacy. You can go for a program, a dinner. You've heard that there's someone called maybe some donor. Some donor. And quickly, you can go on LinkedIn or Google and see, oh, how does the person look like? So you approach the person, oh, I'm so-so and so person. I, I know you are into ABC because Google told you. And that's some, sometimes how you connect with people. So it's one, one technique I learned for uh, one of my uh, recent bosses, that sometimes you don't even know the person, but when he was being introduced at the beginning of the program, during the program, you take your phone, oh, okay, who is this person, what has he been doing? Well, probably the last thing he said, if he's somebody who is a social commentator, what are some of the issues he talks 
about, and that's the way you, you connect with people. So over to your last, uh, the, the question that you asked. I know that uh, the society is doing uh, everything possible to get clearance for the team. What happens is this, at the end of the year, I, do, I will not want to preempt a response from the panel when the discussion starts, but just to give you an overview. When uh, pharmacy students or any professional group of people are inducted, ordinarily there's a process. Your names are submitted to the finance ministry after which clearance will be given. It is only when clearance is given that it's easier for you to be paid. So until those processes go through, when it comes to the payment, pharmacy as a profession cannot advance any form of payment. But if you look at what happened, for instance, last year, there was a point where PSGH, as caring as PSGH was, they had to step in to advance interest free loans for the family house officers who had had what? A belated uh, approval for their house job. So on their scene, these are, this are the processes that go through. But I can assure you, because when we finally uh, met with the minister that was um, last year, because I had the uh, warm privilege of being there as well, I know that the profession does not renege on its promise when it comes to such processes. If there's anything the prof a profession could do yesterday, I assure you that it would have been done. So anything that is being worked on now, I know it's in there. It will inure to your benefit. But whilst you wait, this is a, a little snippet of what I want to share. I know that in the last, uh, since COVID struck, one thing that has changed, or what I realized in pharmacy is before even COVID came, pharmacy did an AGM and talking about, the theme was about pharmacy in a digital age. And this was before COVID. And during COVID, a lot of things transpired a lot of virtual programs. So you take some Ivy League schools like Harvard, Yale, and all those schools. They are, doing, they are rolling out a lot of courses. If you are on LinkedIn, for instance, you see a lot of such free courses. In this fallow period, as you wait for clearance, if you, are, you have access to internet data, you want to try your hands on some of these online courses. It could be something on marketing, something on ma uh, management. So even if you are, you are at home for three, four, five, six months, at least whatever time you were spending online would end up being fruitful. So this is just a way to also make you um, competitive. So I know currently, before I walked into the auditorium, I was talking to a colleague uh, a few minutes ago, and he was telling me that uh, currently we are producing quite a lot of uh, young pharmacists. And uh, his worry is that he hears there will be, it will get to a point the system will be saturated and we will not have enough employment. And then I asked him that, what is his domain or what is his criteria for employment? The question or the answer I got was that everything he knows about pharmacy is constricted to Ghana. But what you need to always look out for as a young pharmacist is that the competition or the scope of your practice cannot be limited to Ghana. As a pharmacist trained in Ghana, see yourself as somebody who is a pharmacist who can practice in any country in the world. So assuming community pharmacy, on average, employs 500 people, and in your year graduation group, you are 600. It means that, obviously, not all of you would be employed, even if the employers want to give you the opportunity. Ask yourself, if I want to be a globally competitive pharmacist, what do I do? How do I become a globally competitive pharmacist? I need to look at what is it that is being done that would make me globally competitive. Maybe I need to be well-versed in some aspects of community practice. In community practice, we've introduced vaccination. Am I capable of vaccinating? If I'm doing a locum, do I give my employer value for money? Do I, do, I, do I distinguish myself when clients come up? If I'm not present on duty, do clients call my, uh, my bosses or my employers to ask, where is that young pharmacist? These are some of the questions that you need to ask yourselves as you wait. If there's any locum you are doing between then until when you are uh, fully employed,
these are some of the questions you want to answer to make yourself what? Competitive. So we will not have, I can assure you that a lot of ideas will be shared here. But all the answers, all the answers ultimately lies with your action and your execution of the ideas that will be shared today. So we will not want to do much talking as we wait to officially start. As we wait to officially start, I want to ask, uh, when did pharmacy officially start in Gold Coast, Ghana? You know, before Ghana be became Ghana, we were Gold Coast. And when we attained independence, obviously, we now became Ghana. Anyone wants to share with us when pharmacy started in Ghana? Anyone? And this is for 200 cities, free data. When pharmacy started. So I, I think I need to include an as, as, I need to add an exclusion criteria. So the exclusion criteria <laughs> involves all the chairpersons of the interest groups, anyone who works in pharmacy council, anyone who works <laughs> in or around PSGH. So essentially, the only now lies on the students. So anyone want any takers before we start? So that's the, that's the last getting, yes? Come again. Take it again. 1935, not when the professional group started, when pharmacy started in Gold Coast. So 1935 was just about when the professional group started. And what was the pre name of the society? Anyone? What was the previous name of the society before it became Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana? What was the name of the society? Anyone? The students, you just wrote your exam, so. Yes, anyone? Anyone? Okay, I hope probably within, with, as we, uh, the, the show progresses, uh, the program goes on, somehow will definitely uh, come up with an answer. But I assure you, you won't find it online. I assure you, you won't find it online. So, I think all protocols duly observed. I can see all the luminaries in the profession uh, here in Gadded. Hello. Good. Uh, please, I see a lot of us sitting behind. As you may well know, the sound is not the best. So please, I will humbly indulge you to move forward. There are a lot of seats here. Nobody else is coming. So that those who may be late can then comfortably occupy those seats. liable for professional misconduct. The chairman of the Lisbon Committee is here. Uh, please, those of you behind the equipment table or equipment station, please move forward. on your platforms. I mean, the whole governing board of the Pharmacy Council is here. They want to give you a message, a formal and an official message before we start or as part of the orientation. So send messages to your colleagues, wherever they are. We're supposed to have been here in the auditorium by a quarter to
pharmacists into the profession of pharmacy. We pray that the vision, the aspirations, the hopes that they have, by your grace, they'll be able to accomplish them and even excel. We thank you and we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. So, like I said in the intro, we will. Uh, this is um, an important session that we want to do before or we continue the orientation before we do the introduction. So let me welcome the chairperson of the Pharmacy Council, Pharmacist Mrs. Doris Fosuhima Adai Afokwa, and the uh, entire governing board of the Pharmacy Council to come upstage and uh, they will communicate some issues to you and then we can continue. It's very pertinent to your progress and your practice as pharmacists. Please send messages to your colleagues on the platforms. Because afterwards, your leaders will be engaging us, asking questions. Those questions should be asked here. Okay. Um, there are still spaces here. Okay. And those of you here, there are still spaces. Please move forward. Nobody is coming to sit here. Please move forward. Those of you. Okay. So from where this lady is, let's all move and occupy these seats. Those of you behind, please, gentlemen, you, yes, kindly be on your feet, please. Those be beyond him, please move forward. And then those of us way behind, can we please move forward? The sound is not the best, so please. And keep putting WhatsApp messages on your platform. The chairperson of the pharmacy council and the entire pharmacy council is here because of you. Tell them to come inside. Do I take it that those of you behind are not pharmacists? Please then... Can you leave the hall for us, please? If you are not a pharmacist, please leave the hall for us. Thank you. So I suppose that the rest of us are pharmacists, and therefore let's move forward. Is Dr. William Ado here? Is Dr. William Ado here? What about Dr. Joshua Bobi? Somebody tell them that. I ask of them. They are your leaders. And they have to be here. We work through structures, through leadership. We've been doing this together with them. I told them that you are supposed to have been in this hall by a quarter to two. And then by 2, we could have started. But it's almost 2.30. Okay. Thank you. Let's start the solicitation again. Good afternoon. We started by saying good morning, and now good afternoon. Are we waiting for the others to join us, or we are kick-starting the whole program? Good. I've gotten the directives to kick-start the program. If we can recall in the morning, the best student raised an issue 
regarding your postings or the late start of the house job. History, going back to history, all of us are very much aware of what transpired. And based on that, a decision was taken at the governing board to put a hold on any subsequent postings until other decisions or conditions are met at the ministry. And what are these conditions? Financial clearance. That was the reason why we delayed the postings. And the ministry also made it very clear to us that we shouldn't in any way post any house officer without getting a clearance from the ministry. But we revisited the issue at just recent board meeting through Zoom, getting more complaints, reports, and looking into the future. If we delay, we are going to have a backlog of people waiting. So a decision was taken again. We reconsidered our decision. And we came out with a position. And the position is very simple. In principle, we are going to do the posting under a condition. And the condition, simple and very clear, that you go through an undertaking that you go through the process, the house job activities, while waiting for the financial clearance. By that, there shouldn't be any room for agitation. If all of us agree or converge at this point that we are going to be posted while awaiting the financial clearance, then it's good to go. On that, we can have a discussion with the ministry. The representative of the ministry at the governing board is here with us. She will convey the message to the ultimate, which is the minister. And based on your side of the story, this is our side of the story. When you buy into our side of the story, then, Mr. President, we are good to go. Thank you. Is it very clear? To recap, you'll be posted based on this condition. And what are the conditions? You agree, no agitation, you'll be calm, cool, waiting for the financial clearance. While we are also working behind the veil to make sure that we work through the ministry and get it done. Thank you. Are you all okay with that? Or you have something else to say? Yes. No, before, before you, uh, you start asking questions, I'd like to say that the posting is voluntary. If you do not sign that undertaking, we will not post you until we have the financial clearance. So it is voluntary. Those who want to, to do it, we will post them. You sign that declaration for us. If you do not sign, we will not post you. Okay. Yes. Yes. It's coming. Oh, please. Hold it. Hello. 
Good afternoon. My name is Jeremy, and my question is, from last year, what happened? We had information that, um, for that is from RX21 batch, that during the time that the financial clearance was released to them, um, it was stipulated that um, and through negotiation, so under this could be any agitation to receive the clearance. Is there any assurance that you are going to still receive the 12, back, 12 months back pay if we are to agree to this? Thank you very much. I think I clearly stated that it is voluntary. Number one, if you do not want it, we will not post you. And we don't want anybody coming to put pressure on us that we haven't been paid. The last time it happened, it was all over Joy FM and everything. The Francois Society had to come in and come with some, with some uh, what do you call it, uh, measures to cushion people. I don't think they can do so now. What we, are, we can say is no matter the batch, we are working on getting the financial clearance. We cannot say that it will take four months or six months or even one year. But whenever it comes, you will be paid. That much I know, okay? Mm -hmm. But we cannot tell you that it's two months, three months, or four months. Okay, thank you very much, Madam Chair. I just want to use the opportunity to explain to you, I'm sure some of you, some of you might have heard the financial clearance, the FCS, but you don't even know what it is. I don't even understand how we get it. So I want to explain to you. So FCFC means financial clearance, and as the name implies, it is approval that we obtain from the Ministry of Finance. So for your information, it is not the Ministry of Health that issues the financial clearance. It is an approval that we get from the Ministry of Finance. That enables your salary to be paid, okay? And this problem is not just with pharmacists, okay? Nurses are facing the issue of non-issuance of financial clearance. Doctors, I'm sure you have friends who are doctors, they've been sitting home. Unlike um, us, the Medical and Dental Council does not even consider this option. I can see our gospel chair here, and I'm, I'm sure he's not too happy with what we are doing. Not because he doesn't like you, but when the pressure comes, it is on his shoulders that all, all of these problems you know, will be laid, in addition to all of us sitting here. So I want to say that it is a consideration that we have done in your interest. And like Madam Chair said, it is voluntary, okay? Most of us think that we should do what the Medical and Dental Council is doing, not because we don't like you, but the pressure is a lot, especially when we don't have control over the issuance of the approval, which is the financial clearance. So like I said, all of us sitting here would love for you to be posted as soon as possible, and more importantly, for you to be paid. Unfortunately, we don't have the authority to do that. The only authority that we have is the, when the financial clearance is issued, okay? Consult your fellow, those who have just, you know, gone through this process and you understand what I'm saying. Hmm? Maybe when the financial clearance is issued, it takes a, lo a lot of processes for your first pay to come through nobody's fault. God knows how much work each and every one of us sitting here, including the gospel chair, are doing behind the scenes. It is not easy. Okay, you are children. We feel for you. We understand your problems. Unfortunately, we don't have control. We wish we could just wave a magic, a magic wand so that we could do. Unfortunately, we would have to go through the due process, just as all the others are doing. Medical and dental council, I want to repeat that they don't post anyone. They, they let the doctors, the newly qualified doctors, sit home till the financial clearance is issued. As I speak, theirs have been issued for those who finished a year ago, and we are still in the process. None of them have been posted. It's not an easy thing, okay? So as Madam said, I want to reiterate the, that part of the condition, which says that it is voluntary. Voluntary in the sense that you will append your signature individually, having understood all of the conditions, that I want to be posted. I don't want to sit at home doing nothing. But I'm not going to pressurize anybody to pay me because all of us sitting here, like I said, will not be able to do much. So the choice is actually yours. And... I think we should even vote whether they want this. Okay? I think, I think, yeah.
Whether they want this or they want to sit home. Okay, we, 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 we took a lot of pains to arrive at this, just to meet you halfway. Okay, so feel free. We are your seniors, we are your mothers, we are your fathers. We understand where you are coming from. Like I keep on repeating myself, we don't have full control as much as we would have loved to have. So ask questions and let us all be on one page before we leave here. Thank you very much. Hello. Hello. Okay. I thought it would, I mean, I should seek a kind of jubilation that finally you are being posted. I expected to get that feeling. I'm saying so because of the pressure that I've received from your leadership and from your membership. The position we are taking now partly is because you demanded it. Some of your members, I remember when I engaged, you actually pushed that some are willing to just do their house job, get their name on the permanent register. Others even said that they want to move on the permanent register because they would want to have opportunity to travel outside their country. So not being posted means that they, we are delaying their progress for them to even move on to the permanent register of the pharmacy council. This pressure really came on, on to us. I've had a meeting with the executives. I've had a meeting with the general body. Based on that, I had to go to the pharmacy council governing board to make an appeal. Before going, I, this issue went to the governing board of the Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana. So the leadership of the Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana intervened that we are going to make an appeal to the Pharmacy Council Governing Board that you should be posted. But that's that we, are, we will not force you if you think you may not be able to raise TNT transport to go to work. That is why it is not compulsory. That's only, but it is to be able to address a particular concern of yours. And since you are members of the Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana, this is what leadership is doing for you. I also want to assure you of one thing, the back pay issue. Even last year, that was 12 months. The leadership of Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana made sure they got their 12 months back pay. So let you be posted, let you, there will be back pay issue, but the leadership will not fail you. That's all I'll tell you. We would work to make sure that you get your back, the needed back pay as and when they need be. That's the only assurance that those of us at Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana would assure you. Remember, Pharmacy Council is a government agency. So that's the first thing you should do. So they, the posting, they will post you another. But when it comes to advocacy, a lot of them, the leadership will have to help you because you belong to us as a society. And therefore, we'll act on your behalf to ensure that you, you'll be paid accordingly and you'll get your financial clearance. But like Madam Chairperson said, it is not compulsory. Those who have something doing and can wait till they get a financial clearance to start their house job, fine. But others would want to start, and when the time comes for them to get their back pay, they, they, they will be paid accordingly. So on the issue of them voting, I don't think it will be very much appropriate on that because for now, all the members here belong to the Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana. The governing board has voted on the issue and we've taken a decision on their behalf. Thank you. Good afternoon. Thank you very much. We really appreciate the thoughtfulness into finally deciding to do the postings. However, my question is, since it's a case where we have to voluntarily, I mean, it's voluntary as to whether you want to send your signature to do the house job or not, I would like to know what happens to those who refuse to send their signature? What happens to those who choose not to send their signature and then start a house job. And then I also like to know what becomes, what happens or what can be done if it happens that the pay doesn't come or the clearance doesn't come for those who have voluntarily decided to start their house job. I think we are very, we were very clear on that from the start. If you do not sign, you will not be posted. We at the council, we don't have the ability to pay anybody. We depend on the government to do all payments, and those payments can only be effected through financial clearance from the Ministry of Finance. That's all there is to it. 
Thank you very much, Chair and the board. Um, it's soothing question, to Let me that. respond to the. What happens is that let's assume that posting happens tomorrow, which is May 11th. But the financial clearance, we get it in maybe 10th of August. When you get 10th of August, that's when you start, your, you start working. The difference is that some others would have been, they would have accepted their posting and will have a back pay. But you will start when there's a financial clearance. That's all we are saying. And at that time, government will pay you. Assuming we get the financial clearances for you somewhere in September, October next, this year, that's when the government is going to start paying you. But for those who have been posted, then the issue, the issue comes up that we have to work for them to get the back pay. That is what I showed you, that we would use a lot of advocacy. I know one of your colleagues said negotiations. Yes, we will still judge all with the government to ensure that you get your back pay. Basically, that's what we'll do. But for those who would wait, once they, once they get a financial clearance, they don't have an issue with back pay. But you start working and you are paid accordingly. With a backlog, the pay backlog, that would be pharmaceutical society's problem, not pharmacy council. I just want to get that clear distinction. Mm -hmm. When you say it's a problem for the government, Ministry of Finance, what we do at Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana is just an advocacy, just to try to make sure that they get it like it happened last year. Because it's the government's commitment to pay them. They've been posted. And this house job is part of pharmacy training in this country that we work with. And the Ministry of Health has responded, written to the Ministry of Finance. So if we say, if Pharmacy Council has to help it with advocacy to get it done, I think it is most appropriate. It cannot be left to us completely. It's just an advocacy to ensure that they get their back pay. Uh, and they will be, <laughs> it will be paid. But, Okay, thank you, Chair and the board. So as you said earlier, it's soothing to hear all the, the engagement that have gone on behind the scenes. And since, as you reiterated, we are your children and we understand what you are going through now. But the situation here, again, is that now we are going to take an undertaking. I mean, you're going to sign an undertaking. So we are committing ourselves. Should we take the governing board of the Pharmacy Council by their word that we'll work on it and make sure that whenever we get the financial clearance, it will be backdated. Or if you get financial clearance in November and you're supposed to finish in December, then the government will decide to pay for the one month. That is my question, the first one. The second one is, since it's also um, voluntarily, say now maybe I have some savings and then I move from Takrade to where I was posted, that is Accra. And I use that savings to get a place, transport myself to work every day. Now, I've gone through eight months of the training, oh, sorry, of the housemanship. And now I'm depleted on funds. I don't have anywhere to look again. Do I go back and say that, okay, I've done eight months. Can you hold on with the eight months? When the clearance comes, I'll continue with my four months. Or all the eight months that I did will just go away because I couldn't finish. Now, the third one is, when we are done with everything, I mean, now we know we are not in normal times. And that is why we are here doing this um, discussion in the first place. Can we then say that regardless of when clearance comes and when um, we, we finish with our housemanship, since we registered as um, pharmacists on the provisional register in January, we should be moved to the permanent register after a year, which is January 2024. Or you are saying that because we are not in normal times, and it's not our fault, but the fault of the current financial situation, we would have to again pay next year as um, on the provisional register till the time when government says there is money and so there is clearance. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you very much, board. This uh, case study, very thought through case study, but the answers are very simple. One, financial clearance is for a year. When it is issued, it's issued per person per year. That is the starting point, the ground 
area of my takeoff. Financial clearance issued for a person for a year. So if you are starting in August, while others have started in February, Normally what we do at council is to compile the list of a batch, forward it through the Ministry of Health for onward transmission to Ministry of Finance. So every year has its batch numbers. Year A has X amount of people to be posted. So they will process their financial clearance for a year. It will help us to find and de design our questions very well. So if you start in August, your financial clearance principle, in principle is for one year August. But the challenge here is if it is issued in September, and you start your work in September, it rolls to the next year, September, based on the list that we submit to Ministry of Finance. But now we are going to have a different scenario. Others will be starting while others at home, per this discussion. It means we have to be submitting the list as and when we agree. You get the point here. For, for example, if 20 people agreed to go into the program, then we are bound to process that 20 people. But to share more information, cancer has already submitted the list, the whole list, because that is our duty. The ministry has also put a cover letter to the Ministry of Finance. But we cannot count on that, because that one has to go through the process, the cycle that we are discussing. So what is your question? Your question is, if you didn't do it, my, my question on that one specifically is, let me, make the, make, let me use your scenario. So 20 of us decided to do it, and then the rest of us decided to stay home. When the clearance comes, is the ministry going to make sure that if it is one year, and then we started in May, the 20 who started in May will end in May, and the rest will continue? Or they would say that because the clearance came this month, we are all rolling back to when we finish. That's the question on what you just talked about. So, so simple. The question, the answer is very simple. I started my preamble by saying that it's a year financial clearance. And if it comes in September, then it rolls back to the next September. That is the formula and that is the procedure. So if I start in February, or the whole batch start in February. It means we have the larger or the financial clearance for the whole year up to February. If you start in March, then yours starts in March and goes round. Because it's a year I just keep on retreating. They make the budget per person for a year. You don't do it for three months only, a year. So whatever, what of the months that you start means you have it up to that following month. Are you clear? Yes. And um, on and the other one I talked about, since now we are doing, we are signing the undertaking, are we holding appearance on council as, I mean, by their word, or they are also going to assure us in a way that even if it takes five years, 
the money is going to come because we'll work on it. Because here we are pending our signatures to show that we'll be present at work when we are required to be present at work. So we are going to hold council, but it works. And our words were very clear from the onset that is conditional. Two, what we are doing, the house job, respectfully, is part of the package of your training. It's part of the package for training. It's difficult to say it, but that is the reality. You cannot move from where you are now to the permanent register, as you are saying, until you fulfill that assignment. And colleagues are here. This is not the first time this issue is happening. Some years back, you'll be working while, you don't, I don't want even to be using the word working, because you are not working. You are still under training. So let's also look at the terms, terminologies that we use as salary. It's not a salary. It's allowances, house job allowances. Let's just be careful because if you start saying salary, it means you are gainfully employed, you've gone through all the processes, and it's seriously binding for ended month salary. But this is a program. You finish the first stage of the program within the four walls of the universities or institutions, and the experiential aspect of it is what we are doing. And it has a purpose. There's a reason to that. And the reason takes you to the next point on the permanent registrar. But that is the side as a regulator speaking. But we'll be with you and make sure that we will not play the cast of the American Dental Council. On their score, it is very clear that is not their function. So they don't get themselves too much involved in it. But council, from the onset, we've been deeply involved and we will continue until we are able to rectify and remedy the situation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Secretary. Um, so last one on that would be that in this situation, uh, other colleagues who did B farm after graduation, they did their one year internship, as you are saying, came back to write the professional exam, and they're on a provisional register. After a year, irrespective of where they worked, they will be moved to the permanent register if they have the total CPD points of 10. In our situation, um, I will not go into the details of that, but then, just like them, we are on the provisional register. But for us, on the usual, we, sh we should do the housemanship for one year, and then we are moved to the permanent register if you have the CPD points of 10. So in this situation where we are not in normal times, like usual times, we are forced to, I mean, you are forced to make decisions for us in all of this. And that is why I think... Okay, um, thank you. I think you've made your point over and over and over. Probably you, uh, not, you think you're not getting the answers. We, are, yes. we get you very well. Okay. The registrar said it, and I want to repeat for emphasis. I'm going to make it maybe simple for you. In this situation, there will be two categories of house officers. The ones who are going to accept now to be posted. The ones who wait for financial clearance. The registrar made it quite clear that financial clearance is for 12 months. No matter what, you get your 12 months salary. So if you wait and you get yours in September, you would work for 12 months and you end it. Those who would want to sign on now would have a back pay. How is it going to happen? When the financial clearance comes, that's when the Ministry of Health will give you an appointment letter. Those who have been posted, the appointment letter will state clearly that they were posted in May. And those who were not posted, the appointment letter is going to state that they were posted in September. So it's very clear for us that then that is what the Ministry of Finance will use. So financial clearance only gives the Ministry of Health the authority to give you the appointment letter. And the date of appointment will be when the pharmacy council posted you for those of you who are going to go in May because you would have already been posted and you, you are working. And those who are going to wait will now have the years that me, I'm waiting. So you get yours and it will be dated September. 
then you get your, your, your salary will be processed for one year. The decision you are referring to, assuming you stay home for one year and 12 months, you want to go into the register. I think it's a major issue for you because it's not, true, it's not your fault. When the same decision that the governing board of the pharmacy council today met and said that we would, go, we would, we would post you, this is a similar situation that will be faced with the pharmacy council to decide on. That's a governing board decision. Let's assume that there's no financial clearance for one year. You've done your how you've you've completed your written your professional exams. You've been home for one whole year. What happens on your migration to the permanent register? That is a decision of the governing board of the pharmacy council to make. The law says that you, for now you have to do house job for 12 months for no reasons due to I mean the pharmacy council or due to yourself. We are being forced for you to be at home for 12 months. The governing board of the pharmacy council would then have to make a decision. We haven't gotten yet. We, we haven't gotten there yet, and we cannot decide for the future because we intend to make sure that you do your 12 months house job. That's for now our intention. That those who want to go can go, and those who want to wait for the financial clearance would wait and do the 12 months, and you'll be paid for 12 months. I hope this puts clarity to the series of questions you've asked. Said it all. So maybe just to make you comfortable, we are doing this in your favor. It's a big favor we are doing you. And I just want to reassure you that we continue to work very hard. God knows how much work we put into this. You have no idea. We continue to work very hard to ensure that it's a win-win for both parties. Thank you. You have more questions feel free okay yes i just had one and then a clarification um mm. are there like timelines at the conclusion of this meeting maybe when you get back to us on when we are going to um sign us that's what i wanted to know and also i just since the council is here i just wanted clarity on something because we did farm d does that mean that our 12 months training must be in a hospital or are there conversations that are going to open up other sectors that we can practice after the one year. Because I think this also, in a way, can solve the whole problem. So that if people want to do industry, any other thing, maybe they can get postings there. So that's what I just wanted to clarify. Or well, because it's FAMD, it's strictly hospital and nothing else. And then timelines. That's what I wanted to ask. I just, I'm just itching to stand up. Don't let us misconstrue what is FAMD. FAMD is a professional first degree for pharmacy practice as it stands today. It's not a specialization to any area, hospital, or no. It depends on the school. Some of the school's philosophy is largely clinical. But FAMD itself is a first degree professional program. It is not a specialist area that you say you are in a hospital, you cannot work in an industry. No. Let's get that thing clear from the onset. If you want to specialize subsequently, then it behoves on you to continue. So now, from D, you can work in a hospital, any area or aspect of the pharmacy practice. Are you very clear? Don't say from D, I'm restricted to the hospital. No. Two, the program is said that we have a timetable, periods of posting. Fortunately, the head of the department of that area is also here. We don't limit or restrict you to one area of, area of practice. You go on rotation. Education, head of the education is also here. So my good friend and brother, a colleague, from D, is a first degree professional program. Thank you. And please, on the timelines as well. I think, I well. think there, are, there are a lot of other questions. The timelines. A, a lot of other things that Francisco Society is going to do with you. So basically, our decision is this. For those who want to be posted, voluntary, we will post them while awaiting for financial clearance from the Ministry of Finance. 
Others also may decide to wait until the financial clearance comes before they start, or before they are posted. We also let you understand that for each person, the financial clearance is for 12 months. 12 months. Okay? So let's get that straight. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Sure. Good afternoon once again. So my question is, my, my point actually is, now that the decision has been made that we are likely going to start the house job based on voluntary postings, I will humbly plea with council, PSGH, and Gospel to make the time schedule in the hospital very favorable for us. And then if they can manage it in a way that we won't be too much occupied, that way we can have time to do, pursue other means of generating income to support our cause as we perform our duties as house officers. Thank you very much. I think that will be negotiations for each individual when you go into whatever establishment you are posted in. You can take a decision with your boss on that. You can take, come to an agreement on that. We cannot, as a council, take a decision on that. We can't. Sorry. issue for you. That is why we got the governing board of the pharmacy council themselves to sit here, speak to you, and take questions from you, and hear from you themselves. They have. We'll continue. And so, without wasting time, let me invite the standing executive committee of the uh, Pharmacy Society of Ghana. We don't have much time. The equipment you see in this auditorium, they were brought from our side. Four we are supposed to have left here. That's why we wanted you to come. So quickly, let me introduce the executive committee and then the MC will come. Yeah. So uh, let me introduce to you, you saw him today, the president of the Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana, pharmacist Dr. Samuel Kodonko. He is our leader. Every pharmacist in Ghana, this is your president, the leader. And then we have his vice, the vice president. In the absence of the president, he acts as president. That is his constitutionally mandated rule. Pharmacist Kwabna Asante Ofer, Esquire, which means he's also a lawyer. And then we have the, the one who who looks after our money. Pharmacist Silas Kwabna Ajekum. And then we have the executive member. Now he's a last man standing. We used to have four executive members, but now we have one executive member. And his pharmacist doctor Richmond Edusa Poku. So they form the elected members of SEC. And then we have an appointed member, myself, Reverend Dr. Dennis Sena, with the executive secretary. We have a co-opted member by this governing board. 
pharmacist, Dr. Nana Abuaji Asari. I'm sure she's not here. And then we have an, another appointed member who's the, editor, the acting editor, also strategy plans head. His pharmacist, Harry Amweniochri, is here. So together we support the SEC in implementing the policies of the board of the Francisco Society of Ghana. Having said that, let me hand over to the MC for today, Dr. Peggy. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so you are all welcome to the second half, PSGH. And I'd like to welcome all of the dignitaries present as well, as well as our fresh pharmacists. Can we hear you give a wave? And give a loud shout while we're down. Aren't we happy to be pharmacists? All right. So this afternoon's session promises to be very insightful. So let's stay tuned and be alert for this power pack session. So distinguished ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the PSGH, we say we appreciate you for joining here physically and our friends joining virtually. We say thank you for taking time off your busy schedules to be here. My name is Peggy, I'm a pharmacist, and it's my pleasure to be your host this afternoon. So to finally kick off our event, uh, it's my pleasure to invite on stage a presi the, the presentation from the young pharmacist groups. And to give the welcome address, we have in our midst the president of the YPG in the person of Dr. Richmond Ejari. Let's, let's give him a round of applause, please. Thank you very much. So in the face of um, PSGH, there's only one president. And so I am the chair. But then when we go to FIP, I stand as the president of YPG for Ghana. But here, let's restrict it to the chairperson of YPG. Thank you very much. I'm the president of the Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana, Farm Dr. Samuel Donko, the executive secretary of the Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana, Reverend Dr. Sena Awiti, members of the governing board here present. Hello. Heads and members of the various committees of the Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana, Representatives from the Ministry of Health, the deans of the School of Pharmacy, Pharmacy Council, and representatives of the Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana, distinguished invited guests, fellow colleagues, pharmacists, and newly qualified pharmacists, all protocols observed. It is my pleasure to extend a cheerful welcome to you all. Your presence and contributions to this August occasion has been outstanding. It is with so much joy and pride that I stand before you this day to be a part of and bear witness to the expansion of our noble profession through the inauguration of young and vibrant pharmacists into the field of practice. I am elated because this event marks a pivotal moment for the young pharmacist group as we welcome many more gallant pharmacists into our fast going force. The young pharmacist group is gradually becoming a strong force in our profession, and this day has only come to strengthen us more. Before I dive into what the Young Pharmacist Group stands for, I would like to agree with Sir Richard Branson, the CEO of the Virgin Group, who said, and I quote, branding demands commitment, commitment to continual reinvention, striking calls with people to stir their emotions, and commitment to imagination. It is in line with this that I would like to introduce the rebranding of YPG, that is the Young Pharmacist Group, to ECPG, which is Early Career Pharmaceutical Group. This change was instituted in our mother body, FIP, during the 2022 FIP Congress in Sevilla, Spain. The correspondent stated that, going forward, the YPG ECPG's president term of office shall be increased to two years to better align with other FIP constituencies to ensure the sustainability and improve the implementation of projects and to support succession planning. Also to widen the scope of membership of the group 
to include pharmacists who have practiced for 10 years or less. It used to be five years. Also, pharmacists who do not fit in the above stated categories but are young at heart. However, this category cannot enjoy the privilege of voting. And this year, we'll be, um, we'll, we'll be having our first election where myself and my executive um, committee will pave way for the new people to come in. So you have the opportunity to also um, come in and stand. Rebranding is growth and should therefore be celebrated. Hence, our excitement to embark on this new journey. In spite of the change in name, our mission and vision remains the same. The zeal and the enthusiasm with which YPG, now ECPG, has been carrying out its mandate remains the same, if not more revived. The vision still remains projecting pharmacy to increasingly become an indispensable profession, occupying a unique and specific niche in the healthcare systems locally through the young pharmacists. Developing young pharmacists to spearhead positive change globally in all aspects of the profession is a mission we, as a group, have been striving to achieve. ECPG has always and still stands for leadership, integrity, ownership, and unity. These values have guided the group in all its endeavors and have made the group a fast-growing force in the profession. A popular proverb, a scientific proverb goes like, Onipaya Diwasayaye has inspired me to give commendation to the entire ECPG for outstanding achievement these past few years. Notable among them include the advocacy for the FAMD House Officers from 2022 to date to obtain the appointment letters and subsequently their outstanding salaries. ECPG has been a liaison and mouthpiece of all young pharmacists, especially the newly qualified pharmacists. And I had worked to ensure that they get the necessary remuneration for the services they offered in the various institutions. And in your case, my colleague pharmacist, based on the panel discussion that we've just had, the ESCO of ECPG and then the executives of, of GOSPA would like to meet you all online as soon as possible to make a favorable proposal to the board. And that I assure you. Continuing promoting the development of the young pharmacists through various workshops and seminars with leading industry players and mentors, such as the College of the Pharmacists. On collaboration, ECPG is currently working to empower advanced pharma innovations. So what we are doing is that we want to enable young pharmacists to own their community pharmacies. In our quest as a group to foster and nurture leaders who would create positive change in the pharmacy profession, we are working closely with advanced pharma and PSGH to make the dream of young pharmacists owning their community pharmacies a reality. Education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. It is in this vein that ECPG has started collaborating with the Ghana Library Authority to roll out educational courses for young pharmacists in various disciplines beyond pharmacy practice. And this would help young pharmacists broaden their horizon. The initiative to empower and develop young pharmacists go beyond the above stated. With the increasing competition for employment opportunities, ECPG has started working on a collaboration with the Cambridge Center of Excellence also to equip and further empower young pharmacists in project management courses to have easy access to employment opportunities. And this initiative is set to be rolled out in June. And as many young pharmacists who are interested will be assisted to enroll. So with this, I encourage you all to enroll in this course as you wait for your various postings. As I bring my speech to an end, I'd like to quote English primatologist Jane Goodall and say, what you do makes a difference. And you have to decide what kind of difference you want to make. As you are beginning your practice, I urge you all, my colleagues, to work diligently and with humility. Let us not go with a sense of entitlement wherever we find ourselves. Let us learn to take counsel and guidance from your senior colleagues, even if they are not FAMD holders. I entreat you to be steadfast and remain ethical in all your endeavors. I therefore urge you, as you are entering the professional field, to strive to be the 10-star pharmacist who would bring the positive change that our noble profession needs. Long live 
ECPG, long live PSGH. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Ejira Alma, for that wonderful welcome address. It's, he said, strive to be the 10 star pharmacist. And I believe we are all looking forward to being 10 star pharmacists. Ladies and gentlemen, at this juncture, we are privileged to have in our midst a keynote speaker, and that is the president of the Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana. So with a, round, a, a resounding round of applause, let's, let's do better. With a resounding round of applause, shall we welcome to this podium the president of the Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana in the person of farm doctor Samuel Kordonka. Let's give it up for him. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Richmond, good job, YPG chair. I'm sure you all understood him, Young Pharmacist Group. He's the chairperson. The group is transitioning, so it will be called Early Career Pharmacist Group. So very soon you wouldn't hear YPG, YPG. FIP is a Federation of International Pharmacists. It is like the WHO. It's the glo all global pharmacists belong to FIP. They've decided and we voted on it at the last council meeting to change the name from Young Pharmacist Group to Early Pharmacist Group. The, simple, the reason is simple. You could be 50 years, but you are not coming to start practice of pharmacy. And therefore, for, as far as pharmacy practice is concerned, you are young. And therefore, they decided that let's make it Early Career Pharmacist Group. But the young means that you are young in age. But there are those who get into pharmacy practice at the age of 40, 50 years, and therefore they have to belong to ECPG. So that is why we are moving now to ECPG, the Early Career Pharmacist Group. For the leadership here, once again, I've had opportunity to interact with you, but the, the real thing is that when I'm meeting with you, you should be coming along with the YPG chairperson to me. Even though I open my office all the time to you, that once I'm at Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana, I meet all groups, I meet every practice group. My office is still open to you on your issues. But just note that you have a chairperson of the early career pharmacist group or the young pharmacist group. So it will be good always to prompt him for him to come along with you. That is one of the things I would say, in the importance of YPG. I am not going to bore you with a speech. It's an orientation. This is to educate you. We want you to know what Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana stands for. So many times people pass out of pharmacy school and they don't even see the relevance of Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana. As pharmacists, they even get confused with Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana and the Pharmacy Council. And therefore, last year we had this kind of orientation again that what is all this about Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana? And even our own terminologies, when we use them, people get confused. Oh, SEC is meeting. Governing board has approved this. They say, what is really SEC? What is really governing board? Basically, and we have various committees of the Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana. What are all these committees for? Then they, they someone, maybe you're an executive member, you are you're on SEC, you are this. What is your role? So basically, to prepare your mind to know what really Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana is, it's, it's just my job, but I'm trying to, because of time, I'll do my best not to spend so much time on it. I'm sure you all know the Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana represents pharmacists. The name is Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana. So you ask the question, why is it not Pharmacy Society of Ghana? Why is it not the Pharmacist Association of Ghana? That I can't answer. I came to meet it. What I know is that it was picked from our colonial masters. They came with the Royal Society of Great Britain. And therefore, when Ghana, after our colonial days, after independence, we metamorphosed that into Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana instead of Pharmaceutical Society of Gold Coast. Before it was Pharmaceutical Society of Gold Coast. But we are not alone. Nigeria is the same, Pharmaceutical Society of Nigeria. And basically, Association of Pharmacists, but we pick the name as Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana from them. So we've been so, and it's run like that. And we'll continue to run like that until such time that pharmacists decide that we want the name to stand Pharmacist Society of Ghana or Pharmacist Association of Ghana. But there's a reason, too, for having the society. This society is huge. And when I say it's huge, it means that we have so many associations under it. So imagine if we were an association, how would we call ourselves the parent as association? The same society we have, which is the Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana, has Lady Pharmacist Association of Ghana, which is an association. Lapak Chair, can we see you? That's your Lapak Chairperson. 
So all the ladies in the house, that is an interest group of Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana. The same way you saw the YPG chairperson, an interest group of the Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana. Interest group simply means that they are a specialized group with an interest to promote pharmacy, to promote the interest of their members. It is not a practice group. So all of you will have to belong to practice groups. These two groups are interest groups. So when you go to LAPAD, you'll find medical reps there, you'll find hospital pharmacies there, you'll find community pharmacies. They are all there. The same happens with the ECPG or the Young Pharmacies Group. They are interest groups. But we have the practice groups where you need to start identifying all of them, where you belong to. The biggest practice group of the Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana is an association which is very huge. It's really big. And it is called CPPA. So if you don't know CPPA, it's the Community Practice Pharmacists Association. The chairperson is here, Dr. Ireland. Can you let the members see? Yes. So that is our chairperson for CPP. So all of you working at the community pharmacy level, at the retail pharmacy, you belong to CPPA. And if you, don't, you are not on the CPPA platform, the link will be shared on your join the CPPA platform because a lot of things will be happening with respect to CPPA going forward. Then we have the second biggest group that will be GOSPA the Government and Hospital Pharmacists Association. So these are all associations. And the Gospel Chairperson is also here with us. We call him Papa Nat. He works at Kolebu, Nat Kumsin. He's here. So those with interest, for now, all of you, most of you will be working in hospitals for your house jobs. So he'll be your chairperson when it comes to your police issues at work. But when you come out of school and you still want to work at the hospital, you would work with Gospel. So we have Gospel, they have the executives as an association. Then after these two, then comes the third group. That third group, when we were growing up, we were supposed to be called, I mean, they saw us as the aristocrats or pharmacists, and that's what they called our rep, the reps, because it was the easiest route to own a car. And as a young man, when you come out, or a young man or young woman, and you want to drive a car, you want to pass that shortest route by becoming a medical rep, at least you get a car to drive. And that association is called our rep, Association of Representatives of Ethical Pharmaceutical Industry. Please, the name is long. There was a reason why we called it then. Because most of us then were working for the ethical pharmaceutical industry, which is the big pharma companies, the Novartis, the Glaxo, the Rush. So we, we coined that name. And I was lucky enough to have served as a treasurer of Arepi. I was also a vice chairperson of Arepi. We have in, we now missed the chairperson of Arepi. I saw him, he's here. Mr. Philip Tagboto. Yes. So for those of you who want to be reps, who want to be in, in marketing, the man is here right after you should be able to get hold of him. So that is another big group that we have. But that group is also going to undergo some metamorphosis. The same way YPG, we want the group's name to change. It has to, in fact, they are going to go under transformation to embrace a lot more pharmacists in sales and marketing. So the name Arepi may change for the future. When it changes and governing board approves it, we will bring it to AGM and you'll get to know what is happening there. Then we move from there, we'll get to one group that it's also very nice, especially those of you who love academics. And we call them ASFRA, which is Association of the Academics and Research. So those who want to go into academia, do we have representative ASFRA here? That's the research and academic group. All your lecturers who taught you, yes. Okay, great one, thank you. So we have a representative of the ASFRA group. So this is also a practice group. So you can decide that you want to pursue your master's, MPhil, your PhD. It's a practice group under the Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana. Then the practice group, I'm trying, I hope. I've done gospel. IPA, yes. IPA, we have the representative of the Industrial Pharmacists Association. They are probably the smallest. We have very few pharmacists in the industry. But we have IPA, the Industrial Pharmacists Association. Which means if you are, want to become a production pharmacist, that's where you belong. If you want to be quality assurance pharmacist in the industry, they also belong there. Then there is a group, IPA chair, are you here? Or representative of IPA, Industrial Pharmacist Association. We have the regulatory pharmacist. The regulatory pharmacists are those who work at the pharmacy council, they work at FDA, also work at NHIA. These groups 
we are still working as to how we can get them as a practice group. For now, some of them will join GOSPA, some will join other groups because we have not been able to build a full practice group of regulators. But indeed, there's a quite a huge number of pharmacists. So soon, you would hear about regulatory pharmacists. But I can see some of you here wanting to work at Pharmacy Council or FDA to become regulatory pharmacists, where you regulate other professionals or you regulate your own colleagues. That is another practice group. You come out and you say you want to be a regulator. So for now, these are various practice groups. I've also tried to touch on various interest groups for you to know what the Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana stands. So when you hear the society, so many groups are there. And all these chairpersons that I mentioned come together, together with the SEC, to form what we call the governing board. But I'm sure somebody will say, what is SEC first of all? SEC are the four of us that were introduced plus our executive secretary, and we have two co-opted members. The co one of them is a lady who is the head of our strategic plan. The other is our editor and the manager of the strategic plan or the deputy executive secretary. So the six of us run the Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana on a day-to-day basis, month-to-month meetings. SEC usually meet once a month, but most times it ends up being twice a month to make decisions on behalf of the society. We are supposed to be closer. So the standing executive committee, every two years, will have to go through an election. A treasurer is right by my side. And then if we go to our constitution, it's usually referred to as the honorary treasurer, his pharmacist, Salah Sejikum. He's a treasurer of the Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana, and therefore a SEC member. He is elected to be a SEC member. So, a, yeah, so that's colleagues way to see you. Then the vice president is also a SEC member. Uh, he's been introduced already, so Kwabna, at least he can give. Then our executive member, for those of you in Kumasi, Garrison Pharmacy. Anytime you read a story about Garrison, Garrison, that's the face behind it. Do Dr. Rich Dusapoku, he likes writing a lot. And at least he's projecting pharmacy in a positive way on all issues that he picks up, he tries to put it out. And I'm sure a lot of you will can start learning from him to also write out and make pharmacy more popular. So we constitute SEC, and SEC runs the affairs of the society. But in the, uh, we are only very few. How can we administer for the four to 5,000 pharmacist numbers that we have? And therefore, the society in its constitution says that there should be a governing board. The governing board ratifies decisions of SEC. So every three months or four months, once it's supposed to be four times in a year, a governing board will meet. And when the governing board means that they are looking at the activities of SEC, they review what we've done all our decisions, all our budgets, how are you spending the money, where are you, they ask us all the questions to answer. They do that on behalf of the general membership because members are going to meet only once a year at an annual general meeting. So the constitution ensures that the SEC and the president are kept to check by trying to know what are you doing, where is, what, what is happening here, give us an update here. And that's what you call the governing board. So most time decisions are made from the governing board on behalf of the membership. The governing board is made up of all these, all those I mentioned, plus the regional chairpersons. Regional chairpersons, the 10 traditional regions of Ghana also elect one chairperson every two years. So all the chairpersons in the house, at least I know my greater Accra chairperson is here. Pharmacist Bona. Yes, so that's the greater Accra chairperson. So the, the regional chairpersons, is the regional chairperson is also here. Right. Thank you, Dr. George Atara boy is here. Those in Kofodia know, you know him as Gapson Pharmacy. So basically, when you get all the regional executives plus the, the regional chairpersons plus the interest group chairpersons plus the practice group chairpersons together with SEC becomes the governing board. And when we go into a meeting, it's about 22 to 25. Sometimes you have 22 to 20. There's quite a huge number. Major decisions of the Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana are basically taken by the governing board. Then the ones that are, we are bound by constitution to go to the members, like our dues. Governing board cannot face dues for members. So we go to an annual general meeting. So next year, maybe you'll be paying 2,000 Ghana cities. The only way to avoid it is to come to Takradi because we may go and <laughs> vote on the next dues to be paid. So you present it and members will decide on it and vote for it. So the annual general meeting happens once every year. Then in the year that we are going to have an election, the same annual general meeting is called annual general conference. So this year we'll be meeting, a, we'll be having an annual general conference in Takrade. How many of you are hoping to be there? I just want to see by hand. How many of you are trying to be in Takrade? Let me see by hand. How many of the, 
They knew in that pharmacist would want to be in Takrade. Okay, fine. Please start preparing towards it. I know you are all doing locums. So please make your savings towards <laughs> you're coming to Takrade because it's really going to be fun, even though you have not been fully engaged. But indeed, even if government had employed you, they wouldn't have paid you by the way. It would still be hanging in there. So no matter what, you have to find means of coming to Takrade. So this is what is going to happen. We will have our annual general meeting, which has a scientific session and business sessions and a whole lot of things. It also has a fun component of it where there will be musicians, there will be, there will be, I mean, it's really fun. You need to come and experience it. So in short, this is what happens at the Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana. But amongst all of them, you'll be asking yourself, so how can I play any vital role? I'm a young pharmacist. I come out of school. I want to be active in Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana. Where do I belong? The truth is that you can still play a very vital role for us. We have committees committees that are approved by the governing board of the Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana. These committees work and report to SEC. I've already told you what SEC means. SEC is like the cabinet. That is where the president takes decisions with his cabinet members. And there are committees working that are reporting to SEC. So just understand it. If you are even confused, always remember that SEC is the cabinet of the Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana. The president and his cabinet ministers will meet. But we have various committees. And on all these committees, we ensure that at least there's one young pharmacist on the committee. That's one of the things we've done. Pharmacists interested to serve this profession, you can serve on the various committees. You can also serve at the regional level, serve at the interest and practice group level. Just approach the chairpersons. Talk to them that I want to serve. So the committees, you can co-opted on them or you can serve on the committees. AGM planning committee, the AGM we are going to have, the number of young persons working on the various groups. So you will not be left out provided you want to serve this society. And I call it service because when some people are coming, they think there's money to be made. Only for them to come to meetings and realize that after a whole meeting, maybe they've been given 100 Ghana cities as an allowance or maximum transportation, 200 Ghana cities. Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana serving us is not for making money. So I just want you to know that once you decide to serve the society, it is purely voluntary. Whatever you'll be given will be ordinary transport because we depend on the dues from members. Government doesn't give us any money. It's just your dues, and it has to be used in a way. And therefore, when you are serving, you do it purely out of service. Finally, one will say that how is the society running? The society has a secretariat, which has about eight to ten staff. One person based in Kumasi and, Accra, and the rest are in Accra. The secretariat is headed by our executive secretary, who is a member of SEC. He is a pharmacist who is full-time employed. He also has a deputy executive secretary. We have an accountant. We have a project manager. We have a, an assistant accountant. So the society has a head office at Spintex. Those of you who don't know the Spintex office, please find time and visit Spintex. That's what I would say. And see that your head office at the Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana. And we have a full secretariat with people working for us. They are fully paid employees. So this is how the society works. Always remember the cabinet is sick. The governing board is that the parliament, which is the representative of the people. And the annual general meeting is like a general assembly or general election where all of us meet and make decisions for ourselves. So in short, this is how I'll start the orientation. And afterwards, I'm sure there will be a panel discussion but you are still free to throw as many questions as possible as you want. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. President, for the clarity on what PSGH stands for. We can do better. Let's give it up for him. So now that we know about the interest groups and the practice groups, I believe that we will join one of them just to ensure that we contribute our quota in ensuring the best standards of pharmacy practice. At this juncture, it's now time for us to hear from the treasurer of the Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana. So ladies and gentlemen, help me with a warm round of applause to welcome to the podium, Farm Silas Kwabna Ajekum. Thank you very much. I believe when it comes to money issues, everybody remembers Ken Oforiata, right? Unfortunately, I'm not. I'm the treasurer for the society. So we are just going to take you through what I usually refer to as the intricacies of paying dues. You know, when you come like this, you want to know why you are supposed to pay dues. There's a whole lot of conversation around why a newly qualified is supposed to pay dues. I just want to take you through just a short uh, the presentation. So 
we would like to start by asking some few questions. Who is supposed to pay dues? Who is supposed to pay dues? Why should the pharmacist pay dues? So for a newly qualified, why should you pay dues? And then is there any consequences if you decide not to pay dues? Now you are a full member, so I refer to you as a colleague pharmacist. Would there be any consequences? What is the category of dues that is being paid? And how is the dues apportioned? And then also, what are any benefits that you get once you pay dues as a pharmacist? And then what are the modes of payment of dues? So this is the simple uh, lines that I want to walk you through. So by virtue of you being a full member of the Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana, you are supposed to pay dues. It is not an optional. It is by back the provisions of the constitution of the society. Everything is written here. That every member of the society is to pay a dues. So please, for the first question, you are supposed to pay dues because you are a member of the Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana. Why should a pharmacist pay dues? And I guess you know why. Even in your own home, you run some personal budgets, okay? So you want to raise some money, and then that money will be used to take care of your own personal activities. So obviously, even if you're personal, you run some personal budget, obviously then the society, which has a whole lot of policies and you know, activities to run, we need some financial resources to be able to attain them. So we have to pay deals so we can mobilize financial resources to attain all the objectives of the society, which is articulated in Article 2 of the Constitution of the society. Not only that, the society has, given the, the, has been given power to adapt what we call a well-defined policies and strategies. And this is what we call the 10th strategic plan. So the whole society activities is run through this uh, strategic plan. And be, for you to be able to attain this objective, you need financial resources to be able to attain that. So it is constitutional, it is not an optional. And therefore, once we pay dues, you're able to attain all the objectives and policy direction. And so every year, the governing board has been given powers to prescribe a fee, that is registration fee. So when you were coming in, we collected some registration fee, which is 50 Ghana cities from you. That is determined by the governing board. But if you want to talk about dues, it has to be prescribed by the General Assembly, as the president said. And that is what we call the AGM. So in that right when we go there, there are certain issues that can only be determined by that uh, AGM, and that one of which is payment of dues. So it is only per the constitution, the, the AGM, that determines how much of the dues that each member is supposed to be paid. And it's also constitutional provision here. So what is the source of funds of the society? Now I'm talking about financial resources. So what are some of the sources of our funds? First of all, one of the first sources it's a membership fees. It's one of the sources, membership fees. So when you are registering as a member, we take some dues from you. It's 50 Ghana for newly qualified. Once you become a full member, you are supposed to retain your subscription every year. And that is also one of the sources. So we call it retention fee. We call it retention fee. That's also one of the components of the fees. And then also you are supposed to pay dues and sometimes there's a levy. So when you take the dues that you pay, there's a portion called levy. One example is strategic plan levy, building fund levy. Those ones are levied that every one of us is supposed to pay as part of the component. And then the other source is also sometimes donations, and then uh, we also get contributions, sponsorship from benevolent organizations, and even individuals to support the society. The next source is an investment interest. So, the, the ma really, the projector is working. Oh, okay. Then that would have been very simple for me. But it's just a bulletin. So the projector would, okay. That's good. 
So let's move straight to the sources of income. Thank you for your time. Okay, so that's the sources of, no, we've gone beyond this. It's not working, no, please. Move straight to the sources, that's where I am. Okay, so we have grants also as well, and then we have interest on our investment. So the dues that you pay has two components. The component that is used for the operational activities of the society, and then the other component is what we call a fund. It's like a rig fence. So the money, that portion, there's an activity that has been allocated for. And so, okay, let me use this one. Okay, so we have interest on investment. When we invest the money, the interest that we get is also a source of money. And then we sell some merchandise which has been listed over there. We sell clothes, we sell the overcoats, we sell cufflinks, we sell tie pins and BNF. And these are also sources of money for us. Next slide, please. Okay, so the extra 150 Ghana, which is being paid by the newly qualified to make your dues 950. This is the breakdown for you. That 150, out of the 150, 50 CDs is supposed to be for refreshment for this program. And then 150 is for your overcoat. As I speak with you, the overcoat that we are going to give you is costing the society 120. The refreshment we are giving you is now 65 per head instead of 50 Ghana. You know, everything has moved higher in the country. And then also, we are going to give you a copy of Constitution, which cost us 10 Ghana. We'll be giving you also clothes, two pieces of clothes each. A, a piece is 39, so two will be 78. And then also, general expenditure after this program, per head, per my analysis, is going to cost about 48 to almost 50. When you add all this together, we are spending 322 Ghana cities per each of you for this program. So even before you become a full member, you have started enjoying the payment of fees, benefits. And that's good for, for you to continue so that other people also come and enjoy the save. Dues apportionment. Please, the dues that we pay, the full members pay 800 and then the newly qualified 950. This house, it has been apportioned. Look at it very well. We have what we call retention fee. And then we have subscription, international subscription fee. We have AGM conference. If you say operational activities, these are activities that society embark to be able to attain objectives in the constitution. Now, it is only the retention fee and the international subscription fee that are used to attain the operational activities of the society. When you add the two, you are going to get 205. So, out of the 800, 595 Ghana cities will be set aside as a fund because all the other components left are reference. The first one is the regional branch. So that regional branch just goes straight to the regional. It cannot come to our operational activity. Then we have practice group. The president mentioned the various wings or organs. The practice group deals also go straight. That money cannot be touched. You have to invest it and use it to you spend it on the regional branches activities. Interest group, you spend that also on the interest group activity. Welfare fund, there's a welfare for the society. That fund money there goes straight to that welfare account. There are accounts for all of these. And then we have the building fund, which is also a levy. There's a building for everybody pay the same amount of money, which is 100. So it goes straight to that fund without coming into the operational account. Then we have advocacy fund, it's also reference. We have the strategic fund, reference. So put all them together. It is only the first two which is used in attaining the objectives and the activities of the society. The rest we invest. So the interest on those investments is what I refer to as the interest of our, the interest on our invested income. Okay. So now if you take the 800, I think I've explained this to you. You see, you see, 
So it's, it, makes, it makes it very difficult sometimes to be able to raise enough funds to undertake some of these objectives. For which reason, the, the leadership will have to always be innovative to get other sources of funds to support the uh, operational activities. So please, the dues that you pay is what we use to execute all the programs and activities of the society. It is not enough at all, to be honest with you, but leadership because of, you know, trying to also support the welfare of members. We didn't want to burden you so much with increments. And for so many years, we have not increased our dues. So many years. We are more than five years to almost seven years. We have not increased our dues. So get these things right, and then you'll be along with the society. Anytime we come out with a decision to increase dues, you understand why there's the need for us to increase dues. I'm not preempting, but I'm just letting you understand. So we have ways that you, you can pay dues if you are ready. We have three options for paying dues. Please, it is here. The first one is the Momo option, which is very simple. You dial star 920 star 50 hash. Then the rest follows. It's so simple and easy to do. The second one has to do with walking straight to any echo bank that is close to you and then when you go, you demand for, there's a pay slip that you, you demand for. When you get it, then the various you know, steps are there for you to follow. So simple. Then the next one, the other bank that you can pay is the ADB. On this note, at least walking you through the need for you paying dues, understanding why you have to pay dues, the benefit that you get for paying dues, and also helping the society finance it to be able to strong and to be able to execute all our activities. I want to ask for your permission to sit down. If there's any other question that you want to understand, I'll be there to help you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Treasurer. So quickly, on our program, because of time, so we we'll quickly want to invite all practice group chairs here, practice and interest group chairs, so that you see them. And President has uh, given a brief summary of the various practice groups so that you see them. Um, the regional branches constitute the PSGH, the totality in the region. All the practice and interest groups work under the PSGH in the regions. We are being represented here by the PSGH Greater Accra Regional Chair, the chairperson of the largest regional group. Let's welcome Pharmacist Stephen Bonham. And then the largest practice Community Practice Pharmacies Association. The chair is here, Dr. Emmanuel Ireland, an alumnus of Central University. And then GOSPA chair, Government and Hospital Pharmacists Association. He alone commands both government sector and private sector pharmacists working in hospital. Nathan Kumsen, give it up for him. IPHA is not here, but he is. Nana Ansai AJ, he works at the Food and Drugs Authority, is not here. And then we also have, I call them ASRIPA. But, but, but we say ASPA, Academic, Academic Social and Research Pharmacy Association. The chair is Professor, uh, Professor Isaac Ayensu. They are being represented here by Dr. Mark Radusi of IMA. And then we have um, Arepi. Arepi. President was a staunch member of Arepi when he was practicing. We have pharmacist Philip Takoto. He served in Arepi as executive member, gone through to become chair. So, oh, our mother. The chairperson of Lady Pharmacist Association. Let's welcome pharmacist Mrs. Lucia Adai in three. So these are your, your, your chairs, your leaders in the various uh, practice and interest groups. Let's welcome the YPG chair. He spoke at length. Let's welcome pharmacist Dr. Richmond. Egeria Ama. There's one important person who serves on the governing board of the Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana. 
she also serves as the, on the governing board of the pharmacy council. She doesn't belong to a practice group or an interest group, but she's the mother of pharmacy, especially when it comes to the Ministry of Health on the government. And therefore, she has also been to it. Dr. John Aziz, yes. She is not for a practice group, but she represents the ministry, governing board. So it's important for you to know that she's also a governing board member of the Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana. So when we are taking decisions on your house job, on your salaries, when we are doing negotiations, she plays a very pivotal role. So ladies and gentlemen, I think that you now know all the governing board members here. We don't have time, so we are going to open up for questions and answers. You can all come and ask your questions. The ones, you can direct the questions specifically to, if you want a LAPAC question, to a LAPAC chairperson. You can direct to CPPA chair, to Gospel chair. Feel free and direct your question where you want it to go. Please, I've answered a lot of questions today. So as much as possible, direct it to somewhere else. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. So every region or any region you are coming from, we, we are still using the old regions based on the previous 10 regions. So each region has a PSDH chair. So when you go, ask for your PSDH chair. Go to the biggest hospital, a government hospital in the region, and ask for the PSDH regional ch chair from the, any pharmacist there. They will let you know. Introduce yourself as a newly inducted pharmacist. We have welfare issues we do as part of the treasurer's presentation, you saw that there's a component for welfare. So they will tell you what qualifies for welfare so that you don't send things directly to the secretariat because when things happen in the region, they are the people who support you. So you need to introduce yourself and be involved in the regional activities. When you send things directly to the secretariat, who oh mind you? Go to the region, be part of the region. <laughs> and then they will, they will forward it and then we send anything we need to send to them. They have the way they organize at the local level. Practice groups also do similar things. So when you are in a practice group, you need to get close to the executives. So these are your chairs, practice and interest groups. So where you belong to, make sure you get close to them. So we now open the floor for questions. And then uh, hopefully in the next 20, 15 minutes, we should be out of here to have our dinner. So, if good, please help us with the mic. Hello. Thank you. Um, so my first question is, can an individual, I mean, can a pharmacist belong to more than one interest group? For instance, because we are newly inducted, I'm thinking definitely we are part of YPG because we are young pharmacists. And we'll be doing a housemanship, so we are part of GOSPA. And then maybe you'll be doing a local, so you are part of, is it, is it whatever, yeah. CPP, yeah. So does that mean that an individual can belong to more than one interest groups? And then what are the, the things that an individual has to do, apart from the fact that you're a pharmacist and you belong to an interest group, what are some of the things that an individual should do to really be part of the, the interest group? Or just because you've registered, you are part, then you just move on. Okay, thank you for the question. Do we take a number of questions then before we have responses? That would also help us in, in view of time. Your question well noted, we'll come to it. Any further questions? All right, then let me take the, let me respond to this question. You 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 are allowed to join all the different groups as many as possible if you qualify. 
we know that diversity is part of it. Multitasking is today part of the world. Like you rightly said, you are young pharmacists, you are part of ECPG. You are doing locum, you are in so community practice. You may be working in a government hospital, you may you can join GOSPA. That is allowed because you don't pay individual dues at all these levels. Our dues, we have a dues that is consolidated. In, in time past, what would have happened? That you go to CPP, you pay a dues. You go to GOSPA, you pay a dues. You go here, you pay dues, but we don't do that. PSG takes the dues once. So you are free to join any group of, your, of interest. If you, are, you have two, three days. There are people who are in the industry as industrial pharmacists, but they still have community pharmacy. After they worked as production pharmacists, when they come back home, you find them practicing as community pharmacists. So they can be at IPA and they would also be part of community pharmacy practice association. Your mic is not working. Can you come forward a bit for us? Yeah. Uh. Okay. So, okay, thank you. So that will be your main group that you belong to because ideally, as far as we are concerned, as, P, as PSGH, even though, like I said, you may be an industrial pharmacist, but would be doing community pharmacy or doing locum, your primary group will be, or your primary or main group will be the IPA because you're an industrial production pharmacist. You may be a medical representative, so you are an RP, but you can still own a pharmacy that you do community practice. That means that if community practice have called for a meeting, you can join, but your main group will be RP because that is where most of your time happens. Probably from what you are saying, we need to have, find a way that on the PSGH website, we can pick a primary profession or primary group and a secondary group that can be looked at. Then it will be quite clear to us if somebody is practicing in two or three different areas. So that is room for improvement, which we can work on. So just to add to what Mr. President said, so we have an API with the Pharmacy Council portal. So when you register, it populates uh, the PSGH website. But however, you need to log on to the PSGH website, www.psga.org, and then go through, and that will give you the option to choose the various groups. So that one, it, you can choose LAPAC. I hear that link was sent to you by YPG, so you, the option was just one interest group. But you can go onto the PSGH website once you've, you have your registration number now, your details will be populated there. But you go and then provide anything, any op, um, field that is not populated, you, you go then and, 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 and change it. We use that data for our statistics and also to make provision for certain things when we meet. So it's important that you do. For instance, you change a region. You, you left Ashanti region, you come to Greater Accra. Just go onto the website on your own and then uh, change it. You've changed your email address. Go and change it so that you are current. When we send bulk emails, you can receive them. When you change your numbers, when your phone, you, you misplace your phone, these days you can get your number back for one reason or the other. If you cannot get your number back, you go onto the website and update your number. And the interest group as well as the practice group. Of course, somebody can be in Gospa and also be a member of CPPA. But we don't, that is, so your primary group will be GOSPA. So when at AGMs, we normally do parallel meetings. We normally do parallel meetings. But we also have, uh, we, uh, we also know that a lot of people who are in GOSPA or other practice groups like academia also have their own community pharmacies. They have an interest in CPPA. So we sometimes allow CPPA to run uh, on its own uh, at a time that nobody else is meeting. So it's something that we've done. We will continue to look at it based on the data and do and facilitate it as such. What do you do to be a member? I believe we have spoken to that. You just go onto the website and change when your group changes. You don't need to do anything. We download or we, we, we import the data and then we see the number in that group. That is the basis for which we allocate the consolidated use. So if you go to a region, you don't 
update that you are in that region. We see five pharmacies in that region. I will give them small allocation. <laughs> okay. Do we have any other? While we prepare for the next question, I'll just, just chip in on this topic about the various groups. And I would like to encourage all of us to take participation in the various groups very seriously, either your regional branch, practice group, or interest group. And the reason is that, well, before the president has said that it is nobody pays you to do that. But there's a benefit that goes beyond paying. Because as young pharmacists, now what you need to do to succeed is to be able to be well connected, be able to get things done, things moving, and all that. And one way you can easily rise to that point is when you participate fully in these meetings. You know, and I'm sharing this as, a, as an example. Recently, um, somebody called me and said, oh, we have been trying to have a meeting with a big pharmaceutical company. We've been trying to have a meeting with the CEO of the Food and Drugs Authority. It's been four months or so. We are not trying to, we are not getting through to her and all that. So it was just a passing comment the person made. And I said, oh, hold on a second. Then I took my phone and I called her. And she picked up and I said, oh, madam, these people are trying to have a meeting with you. Oh, really? And I didn't know, okay, can, you, can they come on so-and-so date and, and please come with them? And then in a couple of days, we were able to have the meeting. And how did I have that link? Because of PSGH. Because through PSGH, you have opportunities to interact with her, right? Madam, as you are sitting here, today you have the opportunity to ask her questions. When you go home, you can't take your phone and call her and ask her what. You will be afraid to even call. You will even get the number to call. But if you are closely associated with the PSGH and working closely, going to her office and getting her to work with you on various things will become a part of the things that you do. She will have your number on her phone. When you call her, she, and even if she doesn't pick up, she will find opportunities to call you back. And the kind of things you'll be able to get done with your career with other things that you need to do, will be so easy, easier for you than somebody else who doesn't engage at all. So I would like to encourage all of us, don't say that, but how many positions are there for me to be in? It doesn't matter. You try and then be in it, regardless. If you don't get to be part of it this year, be part next year. And you don't have to be an executive only. Be on a committee. Be seen. If they are trying to, LAPAC is organizing a meeting in Kweu to go and distribute, I don't know, contraceptives or something. Don't stay at home and say, well, I have things to do. No, just be part of it. It's just once a year. Show up. Be seen. Let, 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 let Lucia know you. Something will come up someday. A board is looking for somebody to be represented, uh, for, for a, leader to, a lady to be represented. It will come to Lucia. Lucia will say, oh, I met this lady, and she was very vital. And she will recommend the person only because the person showed up. Not because you finished the first class or you are the best pharmacist in your little uh, hospital, but because you showed up. So I would like to encourage all of us, my brothers and, and sisters, that let us be deliberate about participating in the various activities of the various groups of the society. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I just had a question from um, the housekeepers here. They said some of our colleagues are eating and it's not permitted to be eaten in the hall. Please, those of you that are eating, please. I was just prompted that we should put a stop to it. Pharmacists are not only lifelong learners, they are also uh, good citizens and, and obedient citizens. Uh, community practice pharmacists, most of us, like I said, were at one point in time or of all our life, being community practice. They have a stand outside, and they have these guidelines which had been approved by the Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana and the Pharmacy Council to be used as um, guidelines with checklists, SOPs, and counseling protocols for our practice in the community pharmacy. It is for 150 cities, 150 cities. So it has all that you need to even your support staff and told by the chair, this is the chairman, a very handsome gentleman. There's this newsletter that will be you free when you buy a copy. So please, he has news on community pharmacy and uh, its structure and, and current happenings. 
Um, Mr. President, with your permission, if there's no other questions. Okay. Thank you very much. Hello. Yes, so I just want to say a few things that beyond the hurdles that, you know, I know that most of you are a bit demoralized because of the issues of the financial clearance. But beyond that, there's life, you know, after pharmacy. There's real excitement ahead. And I just want to encourage you. First of all, I want to let you know that you are not the first and you won't be the last. Even me, as I sit here, I remember those days we were not farm Ds. We were B farms and we were going through the National Service Secretariat. It took us forever before we were paid, unfortunately. To add to that, when we qualified, almost everybody here will tell you who has ever worked within the public space that the minimum was 18 months before you get here. So it's not like I'm happy to say this, but I just want to assure you that that's not the end of the world. There's a lot of excitement ahead of us, and I want to encourage you all to think of more, you know, educating yourselves. Getting the FAMD is not the end of the world. Right now, a first degree is nothing, and I'm sure a lot of you have siblings, you have friends, and you know. So I would encourage you, and I would like to give you options to think about, okay? Look at me. I did my B farm. I went on to do a master's in an MBA in finance. As if it wasn't enough. And all this time I was working. I went on to do a master's in procurement. So as I sit here, I've been the director for procurement at the Ministry of Health for several, over 12 years before I moved on to what, what I'm doing now. Why am I telling you this? There's a lot that you can do with yourselves. As for this head of financial clearance, before we say Jack, it will be a thing of the past. In no time, most of you will be occupying the same seats that you see us occupying. It doesn't take long. What it takes is hard work. What it takes is having a passion to improve upon yourself. Okay? As I sit here, I've done so many things. It's not like to blow my horns, but it's just to inspire you. If you sit in your own small corner complaining, complaining, life will go past you. Please add value to yourselves, okay? My doors are always open. I don't mind displaying my number for all of you. You know, yes, my doors are always, you can call me over the weekend. Especially, okay? There's a lot that you can do with yourselves, apart from the community pharmacy. The College of Pharmacists is a very good place to also enhance yourselves and add value to yourselves. Right now, as we speak, there are a lot of pharmacists who are supply chain specialists, I'm one of them. There are a lot of pharmacists who are now looking at even the clinical practice, they're, you know, the oncology pharmacists. There are pharmacists who are looking at um, pediatric medicines. We are now looking at training pharmacists to be part of the surgical, uh, surgical teams, you know, when you are working in the hospitals, the surgery teams. Palubu has one. And the whole lot is going on. So don't be left behind. Ask questions. Get involved. Add value to yourself. And in no time, we'll all be smiling. Thank you very much. So it's not that gloomy, okay? There's excitement ahead, provided you, are, you have what it takes to do the need for. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. President will give us the uh, closing remarks. Okay. Okay. So uh, our executive member is from Kumasi. He, wants, he has a special message. So uh, those in Kumasi, I know, I know what it is like to, to experience what uh, Madam is talking about. It's been ongoing. I finished school 29 years ago with the president. And I worked for Fonochi for over 12 months. I actually left and joined Johnson & Johnson before I came to take my salary. And still after 29 years, the same cock and bull story is still going on. Nothing has changed. But like Madam is saying, you are, you, are, you are baptizing to the real world. Real baptism. Don't cry. Don't worry. But push ahead and find your feet. You, can't, you can blame the government forever. You can blame the leaders forever. But the point is that even the elderly are being given haircuts. How much more the young ones? So for those of you in Kumasi, I'm heading to the airport. That's why I'm holding my bag. I'm at Garrison Pharmacy within the Udaya Barracks, behind Kofanoti Teaching Hospital. You see a story building painted green, Garrison Pharmacy. Those of you in Kumasi, 
please come. Introduce yourself as a, in the, in the, in the newly registered indicted pharmacist. Then we can do the talking. I can give you the guidelines. He was at Rush. I was at Johnson & Johnson. We worked together. We did a lot before we transitioned into private practice. So don't give up. Don't give up hope. There are many, many things you can do. But it all takes guidance. And I'll be ready to mentor those in Kumasi. Thank you very much. Thank you all. I think they've all touched on one point finally. Mentorship, mentorship. So that's something we would work on. The YPG chair is here. These are the fresh, the freshest pharmacists in town. Let's try and find them areas of interest. Let's identify some good mentors for them. And let's give them good mentorship. That will help them to really make it. So we would, we would work on mentorship. Please make yourself available through YPG. And you will get a lot number of pharmacists to mentor you. That's what I would say. I know you all, um, you, time is far spent. We would engage you further on Zoom meeting. We've done it before. So just take notice that in the, in the next maybe possible weeks, we would come back and continue our discussion on Zoom or virtual, wherever you are, you can join us. Just to still give you more information about PSGH and why you should belong to PSGH and why you belong to the best profession, pharmacy. Yes, we will need to be able to let you know that. Don't give hope. Just know that you have joined the best profession ever. And I always say that, I take myself as an example. When I, I, I opted to read pharmacy, I had so many options, electrical engineering, pharmacy, medicine, and I eventually went for pharmacy. It was a difficult decision to put pharmacy ahead of medicine, put pharmacy ahead of electrical engineering, any other course. But I never regretted. When I came out, I realized that I have made the best decisions. And now most of you should be convinced that you've made the best decision to, be, to become pharmacist. The only thing left now is, the world is open to you. It's very wide. Opportunities are wide. Other professions don't give you those opportunities. You have very wide opportunities. Identify great people to be able to mentor you, and you will never regret being a pharmacist. That I can assure you. My doors are open for Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana every Tuesday. I'm likely to be there. If the group wants to come, just give a shout to the executive secretary. They, they would always arrange an appointment, and we can continue to have our discussions further. Thank you. And on behalf of my SEC members, I would want to say thank you. I would acknowledge a pharmacy council head of education is still here. Madam is here. Madam, at least she's done very well to still stay here. She's responsible for everything as far as education is concerned. So even your postings and all that, it will still go back to her. So pharmacist Cynthia is here with us, soon to also to become pharmacist Dr. Cynthia. She's with us now, and we, are really, we really appreciate you for joining us. So wherever the difficulties are, we would work together to resolve it. I want to assure you, I told the last year executives when they met me, and I told them they were going on strike. Eight months, they've not been paid. Nine months, ten months. And I told them that look into my eyes straight away. Go back, don't go on strike. We will get the money for you, back pay. I assure them that every single penny, they will be paid, no back pay. And I can give you the same assurance that trusting that your leadership will get the best for you. Thank you. On that happy note, I believe we have appetite for dinner. Um, quickly, class reps of the various schools, okay? Uh, we know we are from about seven schools, class reps, so as well as uh, various year. I know there are two different years as well. So uh, the different year groups, please, your class reps, C, pharmacist, Stephen Bonner, the PSGH Greater Accra Regional Chair, he will want to take your contact so that if there are anything, announcement for certain welfare-related issues, he can let you post them on your year group. So please, don't, don't send them to me. So he, will, he will take your contact, okay? All right. So let's have um, Dr. Peggy give us the, the final words. So we've finally come to the end of the session. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe now we have all the passion to kickstart our careers as pharmacists. And on behalf of the PSGH, I'd like to thank you all for joining, both physically and virtually. And I believe this has been a very insightful session. My name is Peggy Apia, and it's my pleasure to have been the MC for the program. I'd also like this opportunity to say welcome to the family, as we say, and congratulations on being pharmacists. Let's give ourselves a round of applause. 
It's actually the best profession you can ever be in. So we started with a prayer, and I'd like to call from Araba Wallace, YPG Secretary, to give us the closing prayer. Congratulations again, and enjoy your evening. We'll have a dinner after the closing prayer. Please, let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for a time like this. We thank you that not only did you start with us, you ended it with us as well. We thank you for the lives of these new pharmacists, and we know that you are going to thrive in the profession. We bless you. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' name have I prayed with thanksgiving. Amen. So please, the dinner, when you go out, you, on your right, you see the tables are arranged in the garden, and, and dinner is there. When you go out on the right, in the lawns, uh, tables are set there. Okay.